We were undiscovered, didn't care for one another. You and I, you and I thought I was okay till something in me changed. Don't know why, don't know why. You got me high, but I'm sober. You make me lonely when I'm by myself. I should be free, but I'm hoping that we could be something in the end, something more than friends. You got me high, but I'm sober. You make me lonely when I'm by myself. I should be free, but I'm hoping that we could be something in the end, something more than friends. Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's live stream. My name's Stuart Wood and we are going to be critiquing some of your images tonight. But tonight is something a little special. Now you've listened to me rabble on about when I get a new computer, I'm going to start doing this, start doing that. Well tonight is one of those things. So tonight we have a special guest. Now before I bring my guest on board, can you please let me know in the comments if the visual is okay and that the audio is okay? And sound off in the comments and let me know where you're watching from and whether or not you've actually put in an image for critique. <laughs> right, so, you have to bear with me, it's the first time I've done this, so I'm having to press buttons over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a special guest tonight. We are joined by uh, Joseph Christina. Um, you've seen me on his channel lots of times and i'm going to bring him in now so uh, how are you joe 
How are you doing? Thank you for bringing me on your channel. I can't even believe it. We went from uh, being on mine, now we're on yours, and uh, you have a brand new computer. That's exciting. You have a sweet potato instead of just the old potato. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, we got a sweet potato, and um, <laughs> yeah, we, we got a finance finesse, I should say, everything. Yeah. So that, um, you know, technically, I'm going to treat this as like a test stream. <laughs> so any issues. Yeah, no, absolutely, issues, absolutely. Can, uh, sort it out. So I'm just no, going to boost my microphone because people are sounding a little bit quiet. There we go. Do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, so we're going to have a little yeah. bit of, a, um, a, little bit of a, a chin wag to start with. So um, everyone can come log on. We are... Uh, a little bit early for the UK. I'll normally broadcast around 8 o'clock, so we are a few hours early. So some people might not realise that and start popping on. Sure, sure, and, sure. Uh, yeah, so how has your week been then? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Today, I can't even believe that we're all getting close to the end of the week already. It has been a crazy week today, so, or this week. It's, um, you know, there's been a lot of work that we've been done. I know we had mm -hmm. you on um you know, last week we talked about a whole bunch of things. And this week we are not going to be able to have you because you decided to leave, um, I guess, right <laughs> after the stream and go on holiday. I mean, come on, you know, yeah, you have yeah. work to do. Yeah. How, how is this? I, I'm, I'm letting you down. <laughs> Man, uh, no no so yeah, weekend I'm taking, review. I'm taking a, a, a little bit of a break because I'll, I'll I mean, when, you, when, you, when you're on YouTube, okay, Companies and people, they send you stuff that they want you to like review. Now, I have a policy. I only review something that A, looks interesting and would be interesting to my viewers, or B, I would have bought anyway. So I got sent a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, yeah, you can send it to me. I'll have a play with it, but you won't get a video until after I get a new PC because the PC was just dying on me. So as soon right. as I put out the first build log, I'm talking the first one when I'm talking about the parts, they all emailed me like, where's our video? And I'm like, you've got to get in queue. You, you're in the line. You've got to wait. And um, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, at, I'm actually looking. I'm order. looking at some stuff that's piled up over here that I need to review also. And it's just, yeah. there's only so much time to be able to do everything. I mean, as you know, recently I've been working on um, a testing. book, a yeah. new book. Um, so, you know, it, there's been there's been a lot of work that's been going into the book, a lot of work into the normal day to day. I mean, I'm a I'm a DP, so a director of photography. So I do episodic TV program, but I also do um, professional photography for the last 20 plus years. So it's a there's a lot of different things. I wear a lot of hats. So yeah, <laughs> it's good. I mean, I'm I'm glad you're going to get away for a little bit. That's it's it's nice. People don't understand what goes into, you know, running a business but then also doing a side business of youtube yeah. because youtube it commands a ton an absolute ton of time if you want to do it right i mean you could just wing it and just hope for the best but mm. um i mean both our channels we literally have nearly the same number of subscribers just yeah. over what thirty thousand, close to thirty one thousand or whatever so it's very interesting i know we've had this back and forth like you know this competition yeah you know, bit of a race to get to a hundred thousand <laughs> who's gonna hit a hundred thousand first and uh i always said so, it'll be yours just, first um, you, let you me know how my audio is guys because you said it was a bit quiet um this is what this time is for just to get our audio levels correct yeah uh, one of the issues i have right is i have a, a road uh, microphone up here Right. And it's a shotgun mic. And as Joe will tell you, um, they work great at a certain distance. So although you can hear me great now, my chair is broken. It keeps going down like that. So eventually I get <laughs> I get too far away from the microphone and I have to keep right. I have to keep the chair back up. So uh, you know, <laughs> hey, if there's any chair companies out there, want to send me a chair for review? You know, I'm I'm open for that because I need one. <laughs> that would that would be good. But yeah, when it comes to YouTube, um. A lot of people don't realize that you have to put the work in first before you start seeing success. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's for like sure. imagine if you're yeah. a HGV driver. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to, you've got to do the learning, you then got to pass your test. Yeah, you've got to do all that before you start earning or even look for a job. And it's the same thing with YouTube. You've got to put all the hard work in before you start seeing the results from it. And I think that was the hardest part for me because I was constantly going, um, I need this bit of equipment or I need this, you know, like a stream deck for when I stream live, right. you know, 
and that money had to come out of my pocket because I'm I wasn't earning on YouTube, you know, and it's very hard to do. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean these, these big YouTubers they can afford to do whatever they want, but yeah, they all but, started you know, in the same place. That's what we all have in common, and I say this to quite a few people. If you're if you're looking at starting YouTube, don't look at everyone's videos as they are today. Go into their feed and look at their very first video and then right. compare your setup to that, you know, and you'll find that a lot of them... Um, Marcus Brownlee, for instance, have you looked at his first video? He's literally a kid in his bedroom. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah, and now it, it's ama- it really is amazing, and people don't. Yeah, people don't see that, or they get it, and they they just they just think that you know. A lot of times, they think that this stuff is easy. Number one, yeah. and it is far from easy. That is that is absolutely the case. Mm. But then number two, they think that just to put out a ton of um, videos is going to somehow get you viewers, and that's not. It's like you almost have to be a marketer number one, yeah. and then the content creator number two. And I think that's the same thing that holds true as a photographer. Oh. Um, I, I, fell for that. I fell for that because when I first started, I thought it was a case of just turn the camera on and you talk. That's it. But it's yeah. not. I mean, I had to ho- learn the whole videography thing over the last few years. Absolutely mental. Yeah. Anyway, are we yeah. ready to uh, take a look at some images? Yes. And it looks like the audio is good. Everyone's saying this. We're, we're, we're sounding good. So awesome. We're ready to go. Let's look at, now, let's look at um, some pictures. Bear with me because... <laughs> So now what I did was I went I went and numbered all of the um the images that we're going to go yep. through tonight. There's about fourteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. The only problem is Lightroom has gone and mixed up the order, so I'm going to be looking things uh, that Joe is looking at a different image. So I'm just going to go in here. And of course, check. Joe, t- take over for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like fix this. Yeah. Go do go do your thing. That's so uh, so we're going to be looking at these images. I already see them on my screen because Stuart was nice enough to send them over here. And yeah, they're all numbered from one to fourteen. There's a bunch. There's some uh, majority of them, of course, are macro because that's his channel. Um, I do some macro, but I do a lot more of portraiture as well as commercial work so product photography gala events and uh any type of commercial stuff so um we have some um that are not macro but the majority of them are so i'm sure everyone will be excited about that (laughs) yeah well i'm gonna have to bring this i'm just gonna have to check which one's which okay so um we're gonna gonna bring it up in a Bring it up on a folder and just double click on it, and, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. So we have um, we have this first one here from Richard McGuinness, I think it's, it's. Look, yeah. Listen, guys, if I butcher your name, yeah, that's you know I'm no good at names. So I'll try and pronounce your name, but if I butcher it, then you know it's no good. You know what I mean? But we have your name on screen anyway, so um, you know people will be able to see who it is. But we have this um, this fly. I don't know what type of fly it is, but it looks like he's blowing a bubble. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah. Do you see this? Yeah, it's really cool. So um, for anyone who has not seen one of my critiques before, what I do is I go through like a technical phase and then an artistic phase. So I'll critique your image on a technical ground and then on an artistic ground, okay? So, so first of all, with this image, you've nailed the focus perfectly. It's right on its eye. And on most insects, you want to get the critical focus right onto the insect's eye. I think that's okay. with uh, with people too, right? You want to get those eyes yeah, dead on. Yeah, it's basically the same. <laughs> I mean, I've got this thing where um, I say to people, if you want to learn um, composition in macro photography, learn it in portraiture. Because no. I do exactly the same thing. You know, if I've got a fly, it doesn't matter if it's a fly I, I, I try and do it the same type of way. Even the lighting is similar. It's like a two light setup, you know? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It, 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 it is actually crazy how close and similar these different genres of photography is. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's all, you know, it, I guess it all goes back down to learning the kit, that whatever kit you're using and understanding exactly. what you're doing. Because exactly. with macro, a lot of it is manual anyways. You're not pulling, you know, it's not autofocus. Yeah. You're pulling your own focus at the time. You're setting up all of your, um, you know, your settings exactly the way it needs to be. So you're actually setting your shutter speed and your ISO and um, your f-stop beforehand, uh-huh. you know, obviously to get okay. uh, the right depth of field that you're looking for and whatnot. Um, yeah, so 
uh, Chris is in the chat now. I, I don't. Joe won't know who you are, but he just said that um, he's like he missed it. He missed the deadline to um, enter. No. You're not allowed to enter, okay? Because you keep showing everyone up. <laughs> That's all <laughs> I would say, okay? Um, if I got time, well, sh remind me in the comments. I want to show Joe your Instagram because if if you like. For the macro you're gonna love his instagram okay um awesome. if we've got time but yeah so um so on a technical level anyway on this um this image here you're right lee how you doing hope you're good mate um hopefully we're going out next week me and lee so <laughs> we'll see anyway so technically i've got nothing to complain about on this image let me check for dust spots because this is a thing on my channel joe i have to look for dust bunnies because i'm moaning about them <laughs> Even though I was going for my Instagram channel the um the other day and I found an image of mine with dust spots on it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. it's painful. It's yeah. like when you take a picture of the sky and you look at it and you're like, there's all these black dots and that's all the I mean, all that sense. You know what I could do? I could do with something to clean my sensor, you know what I mean? That'd be that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? <laughs> I have a product for yeah. you. Yeah, and yeah, maybe you you'll be a matter of fact, I'll I'll sit there and uh and just just jar at you continuously <laughs> to say how long is it going to be until you uh, take a look at some of that uh, oh, it'll be Aurora, soon. It'll the, be the soon. Aurora camera care. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I just... a couple of things I would improve on this image, right? Okay, so we have a big bokeh ball up here. And generally what I do is when, when I look at these images, I look at where the focus point is, stare at it, and then see, am I getting pulled away? And I'm getting pulled away to three... No, four different spots on this particular um, image. So I'm getting pulled away to this spot here. Zoom in. There you go. Just here. So I'd probably remove that. There's this spot here, this one here, and this one at the back. Now, again, this is the artistic side. So if you're going for a natural look image that you're posting for Nat Geo or something like that, you leave it. You don't even do anything with it, okay? But I like to lean towards the artistic side and I do remove bokeh balls that are distracting in the background. But apart from that, I think it's great. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, no, I do like it. I like it a lot. I was uh, kind of zooming in here nice and tight to see if there was a lot or even a little more. Um, there's a little bit towards the, um, the right-hand side of the eye where the bright meets the dark, and that's exactly where you're going to find Murray. Mm -hmm. And you can see that little bit of blue where it's touching the almost browns or you know that magenta brown-looking part of the eye. Um, but that's kind of the stuff that's kind of par for the course mm -hmm. when um, you have a camera that um, either the lens is causing the moray or even the, uh, the camera doesn't have an AA filter or an anti-aliasing mm -hmm. or a low-pass filter. Also, we're, we're reviewing these on JPEGs as well, guys. So they will be right. lower quality than you would see if it was a raw file, okay? Right. So just bear right. that in mind when we um, we do moan about yeah. artifacts. And so, <laughs> so, what I, so what I would do in this situation is I would come into wherever the moray is and I would take the exact opposite color and I'd paint over it and remove it manually in comparison to letting you know lightroom or any other program do it um if something is magenta then you want to go the opposite um side of it which would be green if you add green it's going to take it away the same thing if something is greenish or we see here some blue so it's just basically adding some of the opposite colors yeah. some people will also go and desaturate the moray and that kind of gets rid of it but it's just not as good as actually using the opposite color on the color wheel to remove it. So, so this, is, this was actually taken on a Panasonic as well. Well, don't even, I don't, I'm not going to start with the Panasonic. Here we go. Figured. <laughs> I won't do it. I won't Figured. do it. Well, you know what? Panasonic, right? The GH5 Mark hey, II, right? They're well, talking I'll about tell you that. What, there's, there's nothing wrong with Panasonic on the photo side of things, though, is there? Not really. Yeah. Their autofocus is decent for photo. It's not for um, uh, for video due to contrast detection, and they don't have phase detection and contrast detection. So without phase, you lose some of that continuous autofocus. But for just snapping a shot, I mean, contrast detect for the most mm. part will do the trick. So, so um, anyway, um, so yeah, well, well done. So um, yeah, you know, you, yeah. you've nailed that focus. Keep on going. You're gonna you're gonna be good at it. Trust me. Nailing that eye focus on the insect is probably the hardest part of all. Yeah. <laughs> right, so yes. let's go to the next one. Uh, we have this really, really cute jumping spiders right down my alley. I think people send me jumping spiders because they know I'm going to spend more time looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> 
but just look at the reflections in the eyes. So yeah. I'm assuming this jumper spider's on something like um, a daisy or something like that. So you got the yeah. um, the foreground that gets reflected in the eyes. It's really nice when that happens. It really is. Right. Um, and then it looks like some type of uh, oblong or uh, it's, uh, like that's, a, that's like the a, soft box a that filter, is. soft box. Yeah, it's yeah. a soft box on the flash that is. Um, when it comes to spiders' eye reflections, it's like marmite. You either like it or you don't. It's the same with portraiture. You are yeah. There's certain lights that you like certain lights that people don't like but there's nothing right. wrong with any of them okay um but if you notice uh, on on the head here it's got a little bit of pollen as well look just above his eye yes and unlike yeah, yeah, that I they haven't it. removed the pollen because he's in the flower and uh, he hasn't removed the pollen so yeah i do like that what when i comment on these images guys okay you've got to remember that to get that shot, it's brilliant to get the shot. And although I'll say certain things, you might not be have been able to do it. That might be the only shot he managed to get, okay? So when I comment on these, I'm saying that if you're able to carry on shooting, here's what I would do different with this. What I would do slightly different to here is I would lift myself up just a little bit so I could see the front fangs. It'd be nice mm -hmm. to see the flower, but it's not a must. Okay, but I would have liked to have seen the fangs just a little bit more. But again, this is what the uh, the guy might have been going for. Now, one thing that is distracting me is this big white patch up the top here. That is uh, yeah. that is distracting me. I'm going to go into the develop module here, and I'm just going to pop this down a little bit, center him a little bit more. Okay, and then you can just clone out this part at the top there. Okay, right, and. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't find nothing wrong with it. I can't see no dust bunnies. No, it great. looks it looks really good. It looks really good. I like yeah. that it's a little bit off center. That it's not dead center. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't like anything. So it feels very stiff um, uh, when they're when everything is just dead center. But yeah, I agree. I would probably take that out on the corner over there, crop in a little bit, shift it a little bit. But um, you could probably fix it. I with like a, it um, with a little vignette, maybe. So my well, question here I'll, I'll is... I'll rephrase it. I could fix it with vignette if I had the raw file. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. A yeah. JPEG vignette just really don't work very good at all. You know? So I guess my, my question is here, is that um, um, the flower at the bottom or is that extra added um, I vignette? would guess that that's the petal uh, that is yeah. shooting through here. We're shooting through the petal because if the softbox is there, the lens is going to be right there by the petal. Right. So we'd be shooting through the petal. I like it. I do like it. And like you said, in the eyes, it's mm. it's, you know, it's one of those things that some people some people like um, and some people feel it's a distraction. Yeah. So, you know, if you wanted to, you can always clone out um, the the reflection of the flash um, of the softbox at the top yes, um, and leave just you can do that. That's a possibility. Also, like if you were to use, that's why a lot of us will will use different types of lighting, just mm -hmm. because we want that specific look in the eyes. Whereas for a long time, everyone was using ring lights and everyone had these round white circles in the middle yeah. of their eyes where it looked cool for like a minute. It was kind of like HDR. When HDR came out, everyone went crazy with HDR and yeah. every every image was HDR and it kind of looked kind That's of crappy. That's why and... I like this bonnet diffuser that I use. I mean, anyone who watches the channel knows I love this diffuser because it yeah, wraps nice it around big. the eye and it yeah. almost gives it a, a human type look because you have white on the outside and then a dark pupil in the middle. Right. And that is uh, it's a nice effect again it's simply by just changing the diffuser and again yes, yes. it doesn't it, it's it's not reflecting on the image we love the image we're just saying that, oh, yeah. you know we, we, you can change it if you want to i started off um with that type of soft box on my channel in fact and uh, had no complaints about it at all to be fair so uh yeah brilliant image let's go to the split screen while i find out which image is next thank you lightroom um... <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the one with the uh, the four the four Got droplets, it. water droplets. Okay, so is is our next one. I am not even going to try and pronounce this guy's name. It's Yo Yosef, is it? Yep, we'll leave it at that. So yeah, we have a very very artistic looking image here, and um, I've got a few things to say about it. First thing I want to say is, well done. It's a great image. 
Okay, yeah. it is a great image. Um, I'm not too keen on the reflections down the bottom here because it's an, it's an artificial reflection. Okay, it's been yeah. generated in um, Photoshop. But again, it's more, this image is leaning more on the artistic side of um, the macro photography. So don't let no one say don't do it, okay? So you carry on doing what you're doing. Right. So when it comes to the reflections, I've got to ask, I mean, let me know in the comments if you're in here, okay? I want to know, are these genuine refractions or is this a composite? Because if they are genuine refractions, you've absolutely nailed it. Because yeah, so when I look at it, okay, so I'm going to, I'll give you my, my opinion. Yes. Knowing that um, uh, the way it would work, the chances of them being actual, ref, you know, refractions that were done at that time and not composited, I think is very, very slight to null. And the reason being is that each one of those are like lenses and they're viewing that flower from different angles. Mm -hmm. So you would have a different angle um, reflection basically in the, well, in the a reason, and, a reason some, for that, a reason for that exactly, might be, I mean, the a reason for that might be because the flare is actually a printout. So it would mm -hmm. be a 2d plane being ref refracted through the drop. And it's also, right. it's a focus stacked image as well. Cause if you look at the, uh, the branches there goes out of focus, right? The drop is in focus. So it's a focus stacked image. And again, it's an artistic, um, type of image. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, I, love yeah, it. I, I do. I do agree. I do agree that that water is for sure. Um, I mean, definitely a Photoshop type of water. Um, so let me just say that you know the technicalities here, whereas you know we're questioning what's real, what's Memorex kind of thing, what's real and what's fake. Um, to me, I think it is a beautiful artistic piece that I would print and put on my wall. You know, nonetheless, because if someone came into the studio and looked at it, they'd be like, wow, they're not going to question anything about it. They're just going to look at us for face value and say, wow, it's beautiful coloring. I yeah. love the coloring. The colors, are, like, the colors are beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're, they're heavily saturated, which is okay. Sometimes when you oversaturate stuff, it looks pushed. I don't think this does because uh, it actually looks a nice. Lot, I love a lot the, of macro photography is oversaturated because uh, you're dealing with bright bugs and that. So you do push that slider uh, naturally up. You know, right? Um, and I do like the hmm. um, the actual shape that the image, you know, um, yeah, it's got is nice kind of S line. It's got of a, it's got that right, and yeah. then you have the opposite going on at the bottom. It just has a really nice uh, flow to it. So I like it. I yeah. do. I like yeah. it a lot. And you use the rule of thirds. If you look, um, yeah, the uh, the reflection or the water finishes on the rule of thirds. Then you got one up here. So, yeah, it's brilliant. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. I would like to know, I, I want to know if those drops, you know, the reflection in the drops are real refractions or are they, have they been photoshopped? I suspect image stacks. I would love to know because I've never nailed the focus like that in all four drops. Never. At all. So, let yeah. me know in the comments. If you're watching live, let us know in the comments. If you're watching it recorded, just post a, um, uh, a comment below. Let me know. I want to know. I want to know how yeah. that okay? Yeah, yeah, me too. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the uh, the next one, shall we? Yeah. There's Ooh, another little we guy. Have a nice, cute little jumping spider. I love these guys. I do love these guys. <laughs> They're f oh, I don't know. I started my uh, macro career photographing these guys. They're absolutely fantastic. Yeah, but yeah I like um, it. So, again, I always check focus first, and it's uh, nailed straight onto the two eyes at the front, which is absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And can't see no dust bunnies. People are behaving themselves tonight. I had one critique show, right, where literally every single image had a dust bunny on it. And it was all oh, the way really? through. Dust bunny, dust bunny. Yeah, that gets to be annoying. <laughs> I know, it gets to be annoying. And the, the problem is, is you have to then correct it in post-production yeah. and sit there and have clone you, them out. I mean, I know you don't just start type photography, but have you ever done uh, image stacking? Yeah, it's very, very little, but yeah. yes, I mean, I've done it. Imagine, you know, when, imagine when a dust bunny. do it for the most part. Imagine a dust bunny on yeah. your sensor when you do a 500 image stack. Yeah. It gets doing, messy. Yeah. It really gets messy. And I will yeah. be covering how to deal with that in a future ep episode with some sensor cleaning swabs from a certain person that we know. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, so, it's one of... 
I'm, I'm one of those, I'm a proponent of getting things right in camera yeah. and having less work after the fact, because as a professional for a couple of decades, time is money. Getting it right in camera means that I can be doing more things that I love, like actually shooting in comparison to sitting in front of the computer, editing and taking out all of these little spots and stuff. So, and that goes the same with um, focus, getting the focus right later on, you know, to try to get focus right after the fact in post-production is next to impossible. If it's it wrong, is. it's wrong. That's just it. And uh, with everything else, getting your light right, your colors right, try to get it right in camera. And then later on, you can play if you want to artistically change things, yeah. but get it right to, you know, to begin with. Well, that's uh, that's what I've been doing is, forever. Here's a tip for works. anybody who keeps jumping spiders as pets, right? So you're photographing your jumping spider. If you find your adult jumping spider has a lot of dirt on it, get ready because that thing is about to drop dead, okay? Um, I have one up here where I photographed her. And there was dirt on her eyes, there's dirt on her head. And basically, they're the, the like old people. The older they get, the less they care. Do you know what I mean? Right. And they start to not clean themselves. So, yeah, if you've got a jumper spider that's got lots of dirt on it, it's going to be an older adult. And um, you might as well start ordering a baby one because you won't have it for that long. <laughs> as, yeah. as crude as it sounds, it's just the fact so of So let life. me just ask you, like kind of uh, on the side, so like a side note, how long do these jumpies, you know, how long do they last? How long are they, what's their lifespan? Um, is it like a year, two years, five years? It's 10? a bit random. It all depends on how good the care is. I've, oh, I've okay. had ones that have lasted two, two and a half years, and then I've had ones oh, wow. that last six months. Um, gotcha. But I mean, I, I spoke to my breeder about it, and she said sometimes they can just, drop dead for absolutely no reason same as people really? you know right, you, you right, could just right. you can go out in the street and just drop dead for absolutely no reason your heart can stop for absolutely no right. reason it's the same thing right, with spiders right. but i think the, the the world record i think for a captive jumper spider is three and a half years if i remember right um mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> yeah that's 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 some time wow. but yeah so uh, what I like about this image, anyway, is that you've got a nice bright spider and a nice dark background and scene. And mm. I don't know if they watch my videos, but I'm actually into that type of image at the moment. I love the dark and moody type. In yep. fact, let me just have a play with my presets. I don't think any of them Yeah, and while you're, while you're doing that, I would have to say I really like the eyes on this spider. I like that soft kind of fall off of the um, whatever soft box or whatever you're using for a flash. I like the way it looks. It looks very natural. That, that push. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a guess that that is a bonnet diffuser. Can you see the shape of it, yeah? Yeah, that's what it looks like, yeah. yeah. I love then, the bonnet diffusers. I really do. I mean, the only thing that, I mean, for me, the only thing that I would possibly remove, and that's just, you can simply do it in cropping, is this white line in the lower right-hand side here, yeah. which is the marble. Um, so I would I, just crop in just I slightly. wouldn't crop it because that's dead on the um, the line. I'll show you what I would do. I'm actually going, I, I can do this now. I've got a new computer. Yeah, yeah. So I, actually, I'll just add a little bit of a vignette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then kind of I would it, bring it down up, a bit. I would bring up this then. Just a little thing, you like that, yeah? So you got like this vignette that's going in, and then if I can get it there, we bring up a very dark one just to get rid of it. See there? There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then obviously, I mean, this is my style, obviously. So obviously, yeah, you know, you do it to your style. I would then right. I'd give this a slight matte look to it. So I'll just bring up the blacks very slightly, and then add in just a little touch of blue into those shadows and then for me what i would have to do i've, I've got to do this now okay because it's doing my editing but i would have to remove this up here just there and perhaps this one here because you've got a nice bright spider and you want to keep your eyes on the actual spider itself there's one here as well look let me get rid of that one as well there you go and obviously, guys, I'm doing this very quickly, so you know you spend more time doing it. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I would do on that image. So we have we have that. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, no, absolutely I like brilliant. It. I really so let do. me reset this so you can see the before and after. Okay, do you, Joe, do you know how to do this without resetting it? Um, yes, yeah, so you can hit the um, the little pipe. If you hold down the little pipe thing, it's like right next to your delete key, I believe. If you hold that down, I think it'll it'll go back to like, you know, look where the delete key is there. It's right next to your, or right below your um, backspace or right above your enter key. A little point. It's like, 
<laughs> yeah, it looks here. Matter of fact, I'll put it in to see if this works. I'm going to put stick it, it in the it. chat room. Yeah, there it you is. go. I just stuck it into the chat. <laughs> I'll wait a few seconds for that to pop up. Oh, wait. There you go. Oh, no. I'll actually put it into Discord, too, and you can see it over there. Sorry. Not the backslash, but the little. It's on the same oh, we, we have we have the um, We have the photographer in chat, by the way. Oh, okay. So uh, mm -hmm. let me just show this, and then we'll get on to it. So, yeah. So here's the before. Yeah. And then the after. Did, did that now, work I, with Lightroom? Yeah, it's working. Oh, okay. Uh, just so you know, I don't. I haven't used Lightroom in two years because I went cold turkey. And yeah, just, my, just... My, mine is not below <laughs> the delete key, okay? It's next to the shift okay. key on my keyboard. Gotcha. But the keys. Listen, the same. That's listen. Good. Yeah. yeah, I'm from Britain, yeah? Yes, yeah, when, when, We're not from... I'm not from uh, America, so and and this really confused me when I first started the computer because I thought all keyboards were the same, but they're not. The, the, mm. the layout is different in the UK than it is for the US. It, it, yep, they they move know. things around uh, a little bit. No, you move things around a little bit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because yes. you also drive on the wrong side of the road as well. Yeah, we don't know how to speak here either. <laughs> I know. So yeah, so um, I mean, one thing I would do now is I'd be tempted if I can get it done quickly because obviously I don't want to be all night. Is to try and color correct it to balance the shift that i did with the um the image there you go so there's the before and after so you see we've added the um the vignette we got rid of this down the bottom and obviously again i would spend a lot more time doing it um but we've got rid of these little distraction pieces here and sometimes i even remove the uh, the bungee cords because i don't know joe if you know but every single jumping spider has a little bungee cord that, I didn't know that. that trails behind it it's in case it falls off something so it'll just dangle Ah, okay. So it's constantly Maybe spinning my ears web. just popped. <laughs> <laughs> it's my that's my bad side of my head anyway. But yeah, they have this uh, little bungee cord. So if you look here, can you see that there? Yeah, okay, it's a little bungee cord. And um, on an image like this, is perfectly okay. But when you do um, a stage uh, scene and the spiders running around all over the flower, you get these bungee cords go everywhere. You know, right. and you know a lot of time you you, know, you want to try and get them out before you take the picture but sometimes it's the one inviolable and you have to just go mm -hmm. with the flow okay we'll get i'll get to the uh, comments in a bit guys so if you have any questions let me know okay so uh yeah that's a great i love that image i think that that can go in someone's portfolio i think that's great yeah i do i like it i like the look of it i like the coloring i like the eyes i, li I like everything about it. it looks really nice yeah it's brilliant brilliant so i'm gonna bring you back while i find out which one's the next one so the next one is another spider this one has like a green hue to the eyes um here we go it's a brown i would say like a brownish um scene do you see that yeah this is a gorgeous spider i've got to say it's, it's yeah that's an odd gorgeous. looking spider i don't even know what kind of spider that it's is. A, it's, it's from really the jumping neat. spider family it's another jumping okay, spider it's, you could tell it's like, you it's can tell skinny. jumping spiders because of their two front eyes. And in fact, Joe, jumping spiders' eyesight is as good as humans. Wow. Whereas and most... How many, and they have eight eyes, right? So yeah. they, they're seeing like and, 360 um, all around. Exactly. So um, most spiders rely on vibration, whereas jumping spiders rely on their visual uh, look because they don't make webs. Uh, they have hammocks. Mm. It's like you know, where they sleep. But when they go to feed, they go hunting and you know, they spot their prey and they jump on it and, uh, oh, and kill okay. them with these two So it, eyes. it's my understanding, you tell me if I'm wrong, the, the big eyes are the ones that actually see the best yes. and then the rest of the eyes yeah. are kind of like blurred and more of think, a... Think of it like this, the two front eyes is a red camera and the other eyes is a 360 from Insta. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, so yeah, they, like they, yeah, they, they can see you and if they see something, they'll turn around <laughs> to, um, right. to look at them, okay? So, um, so let's go on the technical side of things here. We've got the focus is nailed perfectly on those eyes. Those eyes are gorgeous. Look at the hair around the eyes. I hate to say this, but I'd love to find a dead one so I could focus stack one. Um, <laughs> that'd be fantastic, you know. My, well, let's just jump straight into it. Right? It's a fantastic image. I don't know if he's taking this out in the wild. I don't know if it's a studio shoot. So again, I'm going to comment on this in the way that maybe you could take more images but the one thing I, I try to avoid in my macro shots is to have the same color background than what the subject is so if you notice there's a lot of browns on this board and mm -hmm. the background is also brown so try and note that and just try to mentally think 
is it going to sync into the background now i don't know if i can do this here in fact you know i can i've got a new computer let me take this into photoshop yeah you can always go with like an opposite type of color in the background i mean for me while you're doing that i personally like this um being brown on brown mm -hmm. just because it just has like a certain feel a muted type of look to it not jumping out to you pardon the pun yeah. but you know that's just you know for this image i just think it looks really nice brown and, and but again, yeah, guys. If that brown you know if that brown spider was sitting on like a yellow background yeah. and really jumping out then of course it'd be a little bit different and then they could always use like those cards that you have to be yeah. able to stick in the Macro background, background and change cards. yeah just change the color to mm. whatever you want and I kind of again like guys like this it. is why i do a technical critique and then an artistic because technical brilliant yeah and then the artistic one is like how i would have done it do you know what i mean absolutely but let me just show you how i go about uh, testing whether the background is good or not because i like to have a bright background sometimes i like to have a dark background it's, it's it changes from time to time but if i just blur this a little bit let's go by 50 and then i'm going to turn it into uh, black and white so let me just pop that on there and can you see how up this side here, how we're starting to lose the spider into the background? Okay, that's how I find out whether or not the background is suitable for my style of mm -hmm. photography. And again, I have to emphasize my style because there's absolutely nothing wrong with this image, okay? Hold on, let me test for dust bunnies. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we have to look for dust bunnies on this channel, we have to. Let's have a look, shall we? yeah that's that's clean that's nice the only thing i would remove is just this little bright thing here i think it's um, mm -hmm. a little speck of dust that's gathered on the uh, the hair and i'll just just remove that there you go but yeah that's a brilliant image i love it and i you know one thing i do like about this particular image is the widescreen feel of it because it's in a widescreen aspect ratio yes. Yeah, I used I to do that all the time so that um, I could put it on my desktop. And also, anyone who was viewing my portfolio, if they clicked on full screen, it would fill the entire screen, you know? Right. Um, you know, so, you know, let me just add one thing here. I do like also that there is a little bit extra depth of field to this. It doesn't look like it's focus stacked. It's probably shot at like F8, F11 or some, something up there. Something Whereas up. you see that the eyes are in focus, but then the front of the i guess the legs or whatever they are that that stick out um those hairs are still in focus also whereas yeah. you know sometimes people will say oh you know i want a lens that just you know gets this beautiful you know bokeh behind you know i want i want this beautiful blur but there's always a fine line i think that fine line is exaggerated when you're doing macro work because sometimes you want to see more and when you're in there so tight mm. you know you can't unless you're shooting at an extremely high f-stop and then you need an extreme light and there's a lot of things that go yeah. into play or you're we, shooting high iso we generally try to avoid high f-stops altogether um because when you go over a certain f-stop you start adding in diffraction and right. diffraction is a whole other ball game that I can't talk about now. But in simple terms, right. the higher your f-stop, the blurrier your image gets. And the mm. lens has a certain sweet spot where it's absolutely pin sharp. And that's where I focus from. So my usual procedure, if I get my camera, is I'll set... If you, well, every lens is different, okay? I can't tell you what f-stop to use. You've got to photograph something, a static object, okay? At each mm -hmm. individual f-stop, then go through it in Lightroom and find out which one's the sharpness. Now, from allow that on my camera, and again, you can have the same lens on a different camera and the sweet spot will be different, okay? You've got to test it on your setup. But on mine, I like the uh, the f-stop of 7.1 on the lower lens. So what I'll do is I'll go in there and I'll focus on the eye, snap that one shot. So I've got the one shot that I can go, right, I've got the shot, Okay. After that, I will pull out slightly and then do a focus stack, so long as he doesn't move. But if he does move, I know I've still got that one image that I can fall back onto and use that for my editing. Right, But right. if you do get a spider that is um, cooperative, you can get four, five, six, seven image focus stacked. 
Yeah, so um, for the most part, with every lens, I mean, I'll shoot forty, fifty thousand dollar Hasselblads, and with ten thousand dollar Hasselblad lenses, it's always the exact same thing. You have to find out where that, where is that sweet spot for the lens, number one, and you need to always know that at the top of the range and at the bottom of the range, you're going to be at its worst spot. So, um, for the most part, if you're shooting a two point eight lens, two point eight is going to be weak. Whereas if you come up to four, five, five, uh, point six, seven, one, whatever, you're going to be in a better, let's say closer to that sweet spot. And then you can find out, like you said, huh. taking something that you know is tack sharp, putting it in there, just, just getting it just right, manually focused, and then just keep on taking the pictures at the different f stop. You know exactly where it is. I would even say write it down so that you know yeah. in the future where is that sweet spot because every lens and will be definitely at the same different. time when you're doing your tests right you got your you got your sweet spot that's the one you're looking for is your sweet spot okay the other thing you're looking for is how far up in the f-stop can you go before you can't recover the file right. so if i take for instance the um the canon 100 millimeter that's on my ob obsolete shelf behind me it's right. basically a paperweight uh, i know on my ESR i can go up to f14 quite easily without worrying about it and it also goes the same for your camera as well uh set your camera up and go through all of the iso stops okay mm -hmm. find out uh, which one's the nice clean one my isr performs fantastic at iso 400 um joe might be able to tell you the technical detail but i think it's something to do with being its native iso i'm not yeah, too sure yeah, whether that you, works on photography can... or not but hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, you find you find your native ISO. Usually, it's expanded is where you don't want to be. Yeah. So you'll find cameras that might be a native ISO of two hundred or maybe one hundred with Canon. I think two hundred with uh, some other brands. But then they'll have ex expanded of one hundred or fifty all the way up to whatever. You don't want to be in those expanded areas. Just use whatever the native is, and then slightly above that and stick to that. And then I would even say a lot of people are afraid of ISO because they know that bringing it up higher and higher and higher in ISO is going to introduce more and more noise. I would say don't be afraid of the noise as much of just getting the image because later on yeah. in post-production, you can deal with a little bit of noise, obviously not a lot. You know, if it looks like a webcam, then you'd probably push it mm. too far. But, you know, for the most part, you know, if you get that lighting right, um, you're going to end up with a better shot, even if it has a tiny bit of noise to it, than you know, not pushing it and it's too dark and now all the blacks are plugged and you have no data in the blacks anymore. So, mm. you know, there's that fine now, line. When it comes to macro photography, guys, when you're doing your ISO test, what you've got to do is find your nice cleanest ISO because if you're going to focus stack, try to stick to that ISO because if you're focus stacking, sometimes your software will double up your noise that will keep building it up yeah so you just got to do your tests again i know what i can do on this camera i can go up to ten thousand iso and still recover a single shot no yeah. way would i ever try and do a focus stack at ten thousand because it'll just no. it'll go pfft, the big noise yeah, all over the place nice. so i know for a focus stacking i've gotten away with 1600 on this quite nicely where i haven't got to go in there and brush it all out it's just a quick edit and push it out okay Right, so, uh, right, we, right. We kind of went off topic then, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think it's good information if people yeah. are watching. Uh, you know, just try to give them a little bit of besides just the mm. uh, the critique. No. We're gonna head off. So, what else do we want? So, what do I want to do? I'll try, try something quickly. I've never tried this before, actually. Uh, I am just going to grab this eyeball. Let's invert that. And what I want to do is push that tint over to. The, uh, the greens a little bit more, boost the saturation, and then bring up the uh, the exposure just to boost that green in the eye. Can you see that? Yes. That's that's what I would do in that situation. But importantly, I would only do it for the two front eyes. I wouldn't do it for any of the other eyes, just the two front yeah. ones. And I can I tell agree. you now that I'd say 80% of my jumpy spider images, the eyes have been enhanced or cleaned up in some way to make them just mm -hmm. pop. So let's go on to the so next we'll, one. You know, there's this a question that came through yeah. here um, from John. Um, and uh, he asked, uh, how long will a jumpy spider um, stay still to allow <laughs> focus stacking? And uh, I like okay. that. That's a really good question. All right, you know, we're, we're hoping that you're not hurting these spiders and uh, photographing no, no, them no. while they're no, deceased. That's fine. <laughs> 
uh, a jumping spider will keep still from zero seconds to five minutes. Oh, wow. It's completely random, okay? It's down to the individual uh, personality of the spider, whether it's scared of you, whether it's not scared of you. So, which is why I say, nail that first shot straight on the eyes first time. Bang, because you're done. Then try and do a focus stack. Now, if you've got a, a nice spider who's not cooperating, another thing you can do is find some food for it. Mm. Because when these jumpy spiders are eating, they're not fussed about anything at all. At all. They just they just sit there. You can poke them. You can do anything. They'll just sit there. They're like, wow. uh, they're like my old man when he's got his dinner in front of him. He's like, don't disturb me. I'm, watch- I'm eating my dinner and watching TV. You know, if you turn around to my old man and go, my car's broke, I'll look at it after my dinner. And the same thing with a spider. They're literally, they're just occupied. And um, I have a couple of examples. You have to excuse me, I've got an issue now. Yeah. I've got a couple of examples on, um, I think I've done some on YouTube where I had a spider that wouldn't keep still and I just gave it a blue bottle and then bang, I wasn't able to nail that shot. Mm. And of course, you've got the gruesome side of it because you, yeah, you're taking a picture of a, a spider eating a fly, but... At least you get the shot, okay? Yes, you got um, it. Another thing. Yeah, clapping, clicking your fingers. That gets their right. attention. They're, they're like, what's that? And they look straight at you. And another thing I've noticed, and I need to um, experiment with this a little bit often, right? Because let me just turn this on. Okay. I've took the batteries out, haven't I? Yep. There you go. I just want to practically demonstrate this to you guys, okay? Okay, that's all done. Right, so this is my setup and this is a trim macro flash. When you half press the shutter, the focusing LEDs turn on, which helps you to nail your focusing. And I've had instances when these LEDs turn on, the spider looks straight at me because it's like, what's that? Yeah, mm-hmm. literally for a mm-hmm. second, maybe two seconds at the most, they'll sit there going, what's that? And then you just nail that shot. Okay, so there's a couple of tips for you to keep jumping spiders um, still. But I can guarantee you 90% of them won't keep still. Okay, I've, I mean, I would have yeah. hundreds more images if that spider would have kept still. But yeah, sometimes I you th- just don't. I think I think CC photography's got it dead on. You know, um, he was speculating that you probably use a little bit of super glue on those uh, on those feet, and uh, they're pretty much stuck there. That, that actually goes back to I think it was last year. There was a post in my Facebook group asking for tips on how to keep jumping spiders um, still, <laughs> and someone genuinely posted that he uses super glue. Wow. Yeah, he got kicked out of the group. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip <laughs> over to the next one here. Um, yeah, that is from Benny, I guess. It's basically generally yeah. really black. It's, really black. This is um, it's not a jumping spider. I can tell you. That. No, it's not. <laughs> what is that? That is a scary looking spider. It it does look scary, doesn't it? I love the reflection on this image. I've got to say, I do love the. Yeah, I like the lim- I, I, you know, back, going into instead of the technical, but in the artistic look, I, I really like um, the symmetry. I like the I like the way it looks um, in general, right across the board. It looks like it was taken on some type of reflective black surface. Yeah, it or could dark be uh, mobile phone acrylic, uh, black acrylic, yeah, uh, something like, a, like that. Yeah, something like the, and I like that it's almost monochrome, but it's not. It just has the hint of color. Um, where it needs to be on the yeah. um, on the legs and on the back of it, I, I like it. I really do. This looks this looks pretty cool. I'll let you do the technical side there about um, um, any kind of um, yeah. What this is screaming <laughs> um, right screen, you know. Ah, oh, well, where did this now? Here we go. Sixteen to nine. This is screaming tech, uh, right screen to me. It really is. Bang that in the eyes. In fact. I can't do this in here, can I? No, I can't. All right, we're going into Photoshop. That is the weird, that is the strangest looking spider. Huh. I'm just going to show you what I would have done with this one because I'm guessing this is for a post on Instagram because it's kind of in a square format. I don't right. I do not do square formats for Instagram. I try to avoid it. I just I hate it, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I would come <laughs> in here, go 16 to 9. Okay. Pull this out so that we can get a lot of that reflection in okay 
lock the layer and then I'm just going to po um, put in here a solid color in the background okay oh that's typical I did that one gold on <laughs> it's live guys I need to unlock it first there we go I've got to unlock it first otherwise it's uh, it fills it with bloody white pixels and uh, uh, I'm just going to get onto something in a minute actually um, as soon as I've done this yeah just put that in there like that there we go that's what I would have done there mm. that screams it's it screams that it wants to be printed out on a, uh, a gloss um, glass or metal yeah yeah um, metal. metal remember that one really I showed sweet. you on, on your channel where the uh, the widescreen jumping spider image yeah. on uh, metal gloss metal yeah that's it really looks that is really screaming looks out for um, yeah it's screaming for a little gloss and obviously you know you go in and you tidy it up obviously guys you know just do it like I've done go in there and tidy up these edges yeah but yeah that, I, I like it I like it I like it a lot yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely like, nice. Look, you look at that, you got a cute spider. You look at that, and that's just nightmarish. You know, it's like the, it's the other end of the spectrum, isn't it? Yeah. You know? You know, just, just I, I mean, I don't know if you guys have them over there. I really don't know. But over here, we have Black Widow um, spiders, the ones that have the hourglass, um, red mm. hourglass on their Literally, we have owner. nothing that would hurt you in this country. So these <laughs> things will kill these things will kill you and I have like probably outside of the studio just a lot of them and they're they're kind of scary. I don't even I know. Need, I need to visit. I need to visit. I need to come over there. Thing, I need you're, to come you're pretty over much there. done. You know, you're in the hospital. <laughs> it's and they're small. They're not even that big. It's just Yeah. Yeah, the black widow. Oh, yeah. I think uh yeah, they they're brown and there's then there's black. I think one is female, one's male or whatnot. But yeah. Definitely, if you have arachnophobia, you don't want to see mm. these things. They're just, it's pretty nasty. So let me go. So, oh, we have we have a daisy on the next one there. <laughs> yeah, I just want to comment on something here. That, um, oh, yeah, go ahead. If I was to do this, uh, I'd be tempted to try and get a focus stack in there if I could. Mm. Because you, this first eye is in focus. The next eye after is slightly out of focus. Now, again... You might not have had a chance to do that. This might have been the you know I was talking about where you get one shot and then yep. you try and do it. This might be a case of you got the one shot and then it ran off or, or something. But if you can get a focus stack to get this whole head in here in focus, I'm not bothered about the abdomen, all these, uh, the fangs or anything, just those eyes there. If you can get those in focus with a focus stack, it'd be even better than it is now. Yeah, I feel like the focus here was hit more on that leg, like being closer to that. Um, I think leg that the the, the, the the focusing, I think, is on the fang here, right in the middle here. Yeah, it's a, it's it's yeah. definitely not on the eye because if not further back, yeah, from the eye would be in focus. So I mean, so, it kind of uh, is what it is. You know, you, it's uh, I would imagine that it, you know you're dealing with those are little eyes. That is a so those are that's a weird weird. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Look. It, as much as we say, you know, do it, it is hard to nail those small yeah. eyes. A jumping spider's eyes, they're big. So yeah, you can yeah, nail exactly. it nearly every time. But those spider's eyes, they are hard to nail. I can tell you that now. So let's move on to the next image. So we have right. something for um, the kitchen. Do you, want to, do you want to take this first? Yeah, I mean, I. this is the, are we on the same one? You have the daisy? Yeah, the daisy. Up there. yeah, because we have that slight delay, so I can't see it over on your side. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, for this image right here, I do like it. I like the way, I, I like the look of it. I like the depth of field on it. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where I just, I'm trying to try figuring out if this was the exact depth of field or not, because it feels like if this top of this inner portion of the daisy was in focus, we would see probably more of the stem to be in focus, or it could be at an angle, maybe not. But this, I think to me, comes back to what I was saying earlier, that certain things need a little bit more in focus mm. than out of focus. Yeah. And so for me, I would wanna see the entire yellow portion of this in Definitely. focus, and then just drop you know, the out of focus to the petals towards the you know foreground yeah. and background i think it's fine so I, for I, me, yeah, I would have focused on the front part of the yellow here 
That's where I would have now the focus. Yeah, on. and then I would have probably used an f-stop that would be conducive to actually pulling in the entire um, yellow portion to be in focus, or let's not say the entire, but let's say the majority mm. of it, um, I think would just feel a little bit better. But I mean that, but the actual placement of it, I do like, I would probably move it a little bit more down into the left in this image, but that's really about it. And as far as the, you know, any kind of like debris and stuff, I mean, that's, that's for you to look in the raw because I'm looking at a JPEG. <laughs> yeah. I can't, you know, I we can't look, We see. are looking at JPEG, so it is hard. Yeah, so, I'm looking at the JPEG. So it's kind of hard. I'm not going to be able to see that kind yeah. of stuff if there's any so of that in there. What I do know is there is a false blur happening in this image. That's what it feels like. Yeah. And I'm going to show you how I can tell that there is a false blur in this image. And because we've got a new computer, I'm going to show you how to fix it as well. Okay. So... If I come in here now, let's go all the way in. Okay, get in there. <laughs> so this is the original focus of the uh, image. And as we move off, as you keep an eye on the actual uh, noise that's in this image, yeah? As we move off, you can see it disappears. There's right. no noise here, right? And what happens is you get this little halo around it, okay? Right. Where of, of that, that, that's the original focusing, and then they blurred it out in um, in Photoshop. I'm assuming. I'm going to take this into Photoshop now. So if we look here, ding, 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 ding. This is what I'm liking about this new computer. I can actually help out even better than I could before. So I can actually see where the original focusing was, just there. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, I can't see that on the JPEG, but yeah, I can see it on your screen. Yeah. Um, so what I would do is obviously you've already uh, blurred it. You've already masked it out because you can see the mask, right? And what you want to do here is you want to add in a little bit of noise over the top. So if we add a new layer and we're going to come to fill and we want to fill it with 50% gray. Okay. Now I need to zoom all the way in so we can see this now. So we're going to come to filter now. We're going to come to noise, add noise. And I'm going slowly, guys, because it's a new install of uh, Photoshop. So all my settings are not here. So I've just got to double check everything. We're going to go for um, a Gaussian monochromatic. And this is the key here. You've got to match the noise level in this to your, um, your image. And if you can do it before your crop, it's even easier. If you do it after your crop, you've then got to resize your noise layer. And then what we can do is change the blend mode to soft light. Okay. Now, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, but now, if you look now, I'm going to zoom all the way. In. Can you see there? There's no break in the noise. The whole thing is has this little bit of noise on there, which sells the effect that that is how it was. Yeah. So I, I might do a video on it on the on the YouTube channel. In fact. Um, I have done some before, but they're quite old videos, but yeah. So if you are going to artificially blur the background, which, you know, a lot of people do do, just add in that little bit of noise because that's what sells it, okay? You've, before, it, you've got, oh, it's a little bit of blur. When you put the noise in, it's like, oh, look at the uh, depth of field on that. Do you know what I mean? Because right. you haven't got that, like, haloing effect. I'll call it a halo effect. I don't even know what, technically what it's called. But you've got mm -hmm. this halo effect where you've got some noise and then it's there's no noise at all. Right. And again, nothing wrong with the image. It's a beautiful image. People like the flowers, but I would have focused it on the front of the flower just there. That's the only thing I would change. Okay. That looks good. Let's see. What's the next one now? A hover this flight. Is the, it's very yellow, warm um, color. It's It looks like a bee. There's pollen. It's a hover flight. Oh, it's a hoverfly? Yeah, it's a hoverfly. Let me see here. Let me get, I'm going to get in here. This is still small. Oh, here we go. <laughs> So yeah, so again, wow. let's let's this, take a look. This I mean, eye is that is eye is tack yeah. sharp. You, you, you wow. can't argue the fact that he's now the focus straight on the eye there. Good job, yeah. Yeah, very good job. I'm liking this. I'll be honest with you. I'm 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 having trouble picking faults with it. Yeah, no, I like I like the I like the depth of field. I like that the entire eye is in focus. Um, we were talking about that with the flower. I think there's something to be said about getting the main, let's say, visual spot where you're going to be looking to be fully in focus because people want to see that. 
Um, I love that. I think it looks great. I like this. I like where it's located. I like that. I like all the pollen. I like the color, the different, um, the different hues, the way it looks itself is nice and warm. Um, I like this. I mean, I think straight away, this looks fantastic. I mean, there's probably, you might be able to pull some technicalities out here and there. While just just spots, at it. that's about all I can say. Yeah, I mean, the actual image is fantastic, I think. I wish I could zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, um, this is great. So is this a stack or is this not? And the reason I ask is um, I can see one leg and the pollen um, on that, that back leg is in focus. Um, I don't know how far you know, different. This, this I would is. say is a, a single shot because th these flies can get pretty big. You know, they can gotcha. get big, these flies can. And uh, interesting enough with hoverflies, uh, they're called hoverflies because sometimes they just hover. And uh -huh. if you can nail that shot when they're hovering, it's a hard shot to do, but you, you've got to kill a shot when you Wow, that, I guess you know? it'd be like capturing a uh, like a hummingbird or yes. something, yeah. their wings. <laughs> yeah, but this is a, it, it's a good image. I'll, uh, yeah, that is, that's just, that's great. I just want to have I really wouldn't do anything with it. That that's that I think is print ready the way it is. Obviously you can clean it up here, there, and elsewhere, but um, you know, there's it looks fantastic just the way it is. Um this this little area, and I don't know if you're seeing that too. Are you seeing like an iridescent on the wing on the left side? Yeah. Can you get in there and take a look at that? Is that iridescent or is it moray caused by the um the sensor just not having enough are we, are we uh, talking detail. about this like reflection here on the on the wing itself yeah that, that's closer yeah. to the body yeah that's that's um, that it's like a reflection on the wing it's an iridescent reflection it's gotcha. you know, that's what their wings do if you know what i mean yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah that's perfect i, I okay. can't see it yeah that looks it's yeah. fantastic it is i mean it's shot. fantastic yeah great yeah. shot so uh, I can't pronounce your name, so but well done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's fantastic. in the comments. He's in the comments. Uh, no, it's not stacked. It's not stacked. It's not stacked. No, it's okay. a single shot, and it's on the uh, Nikon, if I remember right. Nikon D fifty two hundred with a one hundred millimeter lens. Wow. That's not a Nikon lens, is it? Because the Nikon's a one hundred five, isn't it? Yeah. That's f sixteen as well, really. You got it See, that yeah. sharp at f16 yeah that's and that's Damn. the thing it depends on the lens it does whereas you know you know some of the lenses go to 22 some high even higher 32 so it really depends on the lens and um yeah, f16, and you can see how much is in focus. I mean, it's amazing. If that was shot, I think at f8, to be honest with you, I don't think it would be as good of a shot because you would have too much of the eye that would be blurry, I think at that point. you'd be losing a lot. I'm just having a look at my uh, presets. They don't work very good on JPEG, guys, but uh, they work very good on raw files, anyway. But, yeah, so, well done. That is a yeah, very fantastic. nice image. Okay, we've got a scary-looking one coming up now. Yes. What the heck? Yeah. That, what is that, a wasp? Or <laughs> oh, look at that. Oof. Well, I can guarantee you now this is focused at. Yeah, there's a with lot it, in focus there. Oh, it's with the Holy Grail of macro lenses as well, the MPE 65mm lens. That thing is an absolute monster when it comes to doing macro. Look at that. Yeah, I like this. I do like this a lot. Yeah, it's definitely focus stacked. Yeah, I love the negative space on the right-hand side. Everything um, of value, let's say, is on the left-hand side, and I like the intrigue of the different of that color on the back side of the body, the the rear end of being that color red. It, it just mm. it matches the background perfect, um, and the rest of it is basically back, you know, black and white, almost like a wolf, you know, looking. Um, it this is beautiful. I really like this. It's like rustic almost with a twig and and this and. I think this is once again the way I like to see um, the macro because you know everyone looks at things different. I like to see the subject matter in focus and everything else out of focus. Um, seeing all this just dead on in focus and everything else just blur, I think just adds to this image just a hundred times. It's yeah. beautiful. It is. It's great. I mean. Um... It's cleaned so, it up nicely. I can't see no technical issues with this one at all, to be fair. Yeah. We've got the odd little blur, but again, with focus stacking, you cannot, you yeah. can't avoid it, really, to be fair. 
Um, I mean, the only thing that when I get in here and I look really close, it feels like it was sharpened, obviously. It does look and a bit I think that I think that if you look, yeah, if you look at the hairs, um, when something is over sharpened, what happens is is you start getting reverse halos, and yeah. on something white, you'll start getting a black halo on it. Can you, and if you look you at some of those hairs, there you'll you start seeing, yeah, you'll start seeing that black halo getting, you know, really pronounced. So. In my personal opinion, what I would probably do is put a mask over it, and on the on those hairs that you can say you don't mind dropping back a little bit, mm -hmm. I would kind of just fade those off a little bit out of that you know extreme um, sharpness, uh, just to kind of lose a little bit of those halos. That's the only thing that I would do here. That was beautiful. Uh yeah, someone's commenting that they don't think their MPE is that sharp at F16. You never use the MPE 65 mil at F16. <laughs> you don't even bother, okay? Um, when it comes to like a standard macro, I use a normal, I say normal, but a um, yeah, your normal type of 100 millimeter macro lens, okay? When I use the Canon MPE 65 mil, I'm always going for a focus stack every single time, okay? Mm -hmm. And I use mine at F5.6. It's pretty much where i found is not the nice sweet spot on that lens but yeah if you put the uh, the mp65 at f16 it will just be blurred okay i have got the right. full review for that lens coming up on my channel soon now we've got a new computer that i can actually carry on with my work now excellent right so yeah um so unfortunately i can't pronounce your name uh, but that is a fantastic shot so uh, keep on doing what you're doing agree so next shot i think i will uh let joe take over for this so while yeah, so, um, i'm just going to come back uh yeah so i i like oh, the in general i do like the shot because it's kind of like if i'm actually there looking at this bridge um obviously i don't have photoshop to be able to show what i would do with this um a couple of things that i would start out with is you know, in your center of your frame, you have a line and that line for the most part, you want to be lined up with whatever the, the direction of the image is going to be. So that center pillar of that um, bridge, I would just slightly move by two, three degrees to the right or clockwise to get that just dead straight on. So it's not leaning as much to the left, number one. Um, I would also take out some of the leaves that I think are distracting mm. at the top. We see some that are blurred. We see some that are clear at the top. There's and one then, down the bottom right as well. It's just yeah, creeping then, into the frame. I'll get yeah, and, and I understand that they had a hard time thinking about if they were going to crop in or not, mm -hmm. because that's the only way they can get rid of that one on the, on the right-hand side at the bottom, unless they clone it out. I would probably take the time to clone it out and also clone out the hanging leaf that looks like it's hanging from a spider <laughs> um, yeah. web on the left-hand side. And I would probably also get into the subject. I would leave the, um, the frame itself just the way it is, obviously turn it slightly. I would probably crop in, lose some of those leaves because the leaves are kind of distracting to me. But I would also leave the actual bridge that nice kind of misty look. And I would work on the ship or on the boat and really kind of just add some contrast in there and make that boat pop. So that's like the subject matter and then the bridge is secondary. You almost, you almost want something to pull your focus. I'm doing this quick, okay? So it's not going to work perfectly. Yeah. Well, it's Lightroom, let's face it. never works perfectly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that, that would be, that's just my, you know, um, look at it is what I would do with it. Um, but I mean, in general, I do like it. And I do like it as a an image where you're kind of sitting back and looking at um, real world, almost like a snapshot in comparison to something that's been turned into art, hmm. um, so to speak. Oh yeah, um, I can't agree more. I think you pretty much covered everything there is on that one. You, you, you've left it, so I've got nothing to say. Oh come on! Ah. <laughs> yeah, so there's you know that, but I mean, all in all, I do. I mean, I like it. It just you know, there's some things that I would change with it, but uh, I mean, I think that it's, I think it's a good shot. Um, all you know, and once again, sometimes what people forget is that. A shot not necessarily has to be the most technically um, perfect, but it has to tell a story. And people sometimes lose the story in their photography. Um, what are you trying to say with the shot? And then say it. And when I say say it, I mean 
take that focal point, whatever that is, and make it um, the the item that is drawing your attract your attention to through leading lines, through color, through contrast, perspective, through um, like what uh, we see Stuart do- does a lot with his is being able to darken areas, and then whatever he wants you to look at, he's going to brighten up. Uh, he does a lot. So yeah, just tell the story. And uh, sometimes people forget about that. They just they capture without thinking about what they're they're trying to say. So but anyways, just a, a little a little yeah. hint and yeah. tip. So well done. We, uh, that's a nice image. Let's yeah. move on to the next one. And I've been looking forward to looking at this one. So this thing is, great this thing, I mean, I don't even know. We, we ob- have a ob- week now. Yeah, obviously, gonna, yeah, we, we, see, we see the thumbnails when we download them. When we saw this one, I'm like, <laughs> I, I want to look at this image because this one is, it's fantastic. I think it's Mr. T from like the 80s with like, I don't know, like uh, I don't know, a mohawk and with some weird sucky suction cups. This is the weirdest thing. I've I, I never seen this before. I know you probably have. I've never seen this. I don't even know what it is. Well, that is the it's, oddest it's, it has thing. got the name on um, on the uh, the file. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that thing. It's what, Ryo, 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 oh, I don't know. It's anyway. A rhino, a rhino something? It's a rhino furry, furry, I don't know. I'm, you know I'm not good at this um, whole yeah, yeah. thing. But he has told us that it is a focus stack, which, you know, obviously we would guess it's a focus stack, but damn, yeah, yeah. it is a really good focus stack. He's even got the hairs stacked correctly. Because sometimes when you do these stacks, these hairs, they don't, they like, they get mixed in with whatever's in the background, but he's nailed that perfectly. Yeah, this is beautiful. It is absolutely and this, beautiful. This goes back to what I was saying. You know, I like to see the subject matter in focus. Period. You know, even noise. if part, you know, even if portions of it fall out of focus, I want to see a good amount of it. Mm. And uh, this eyeball, these eyeballs are just weird. I mean, they're like touching with the 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 eyeball on the left is touching the eyeball on the right. It wraps around the whole head. I don't even know. I don't even know what this thing is. <laughs> it's just weird. It's weird, and then it has like <laughs> legs with suction cups or something sticking out of its nose. Looks <laughs> like something out of Doctor it, Who, like, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't even. Yeah, right. And then I, I don't know. And it looks like a toothbrush. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. and it, it just I pops like it. off the background as well, doesn't it? You know the. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, no, it's, it's good. It's good. As far got, as technicalities go, I mean, this technicalities, is artistic. I, it's great on both yeah. ends. I, I've got nothing to complain about. I, that would go in my portfolio. That would go on yeah. a print, I would think. Yeah, this yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, I like it. Um, All right. Again, we don't think see. we got any... Well, we know it was done on a Sony. That's about it. Um, but yeah. That is just... It's fantastic. So, yeah. unfortunately, good, good guys, when you do a, such a brilliant image, you don't get much screen time because there's nothing for us to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That means it's you good. hit it. Good. No, that's not a bad thing. So people no, are saying a it's a reaver, a palm reaver, are they saying it's, it is? Hmm. Well, I don't even know what... I, I, lo- I don't even know. I don't even think we have that. I could here. Google it, I, but I'm... Um, I'm not going to. But, yeah, that is a fantastic image. Let's yeah, move on to the next one. Actually, no, let's just... Um, let me just leave it on the screen for another 10 seconds, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave it. Just leave it there. We're just going to not talk. <laughs> just let, let folks just look at it. Let's look at some... Is, is there any questions or anything in the in the, uh, in the chat window here? <laughs> Fantastic images. I love it. Uh, the most are chatting on about the different uh, lenses and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll get through to your questions in a bit, guys. So, yeah, if you have yeah, any so questions, let me, let me let, ask let you. So, so here, here's one for you. What oh, oh, software Sorry do you prefer? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, George is in the comments. You use a Sony mm-hmm. and a Minuto five times lens, and that's a microscope lens. I don't know. Okay. If, I don't know if you know that, but you can actually put microscope lenses on cameras, mm-hmm. and you can use With them the right, for um, the right mount. Yeah, you can use them for uh, macro photography. But yeah. Okay, so the question here is, what software are you using to do your focus stacks? That's a good question, because I'm going to do a video on it, because I've got a brand new install of Windows, and I can download all the trial versions of all the software. Right. So I am actually going to be doing a video uh, with Photoshop versus Serene Stacker versus Helicon. And, you know, to, to spoil the video, I'm leaning towards Serene Stacker. It just seems to just do the job that I want it to do. You know? What's, what is the spelling on that? Uh, it is. Let me just so that, that I can do. 
It's a Z E R E N E. Zarene Stacker. All right, I'm going to put it into the chat window yep. just in case someone wants to. Uh... George, what did you use? Yeah, he used Zarene Stacker for stacking that. Yeah, image. he did too. It's, it's a brilliant thing. Um, gotcha. Um, it's like is I it, said, is... I mean, I hate to keep repeating myself, but I wasn't able to do this on the old computer, but this computer absolutely blasts through. I did a 500 image stack of a, a, a blue bottle fly, and it was just like, is that all you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's absolutely amazing. So you are going to be seeing this type of stuff on the channel, right? And I'm not very good at it. I'll be, I will admit, I am not very good at it. Um, so I'm going to approach it in the same type of thing I did when I first started the channel. When I first started the channel, I don't know if Joe knows this. When I first started the channel, I didn't know how to do macro. Okay. And the channel was about my journey into learning macro photography. And I developed as I went along. And it's like my motto on the, um, the title screen. Once I learn something new, I then do a video to tell other people about it. Because I found it very, very hard to find information on doing decent macro. And I've decided I'm going to do the same for um, high magnification macro. So you've got right. two different types. You've got extreme macro, which is just basically, you know, <laughs> extreme. But then you've also got um, micro photography, which is where you use the, um, the, uh, the, sorry, the lens from a microscope. That is called mm -hmm. micro photography. And we got, I'm going to be doing a lot, but what I'm going to do is just show you initially what I'm doing. And then people like George can pop into the comments and go, you're doing it wrong. This is how you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fantastic. So, it's, 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 so, yeah, for the first year or two, it'd be my journey into learning how to do it. And then after that, I can start going, right, this is how you do it. Well, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Nice. So, all right, we have the next uh, strawberries, strawberries. Yes, strawberries. Um, do you want to lead on this one? Um. Yeah, so as far as the, the image goes itself, the look of it, um, I like. I like the I like the way it's set up. Um, you know, there's I've done food photography in the past. I would probably use this uh, syrup a little bit different. Um, a lot of times we would use uh, colored Elmer's glue. Um, it it runs slower and you mm. can get a lot more shots in before it's too late, so to speak. Um, I do like the setup. I like the way it's put together. Um, for me, I, I am not a fan of um, vignette. the vignette yeah. around the outside. I call it a reverse in uh, vignette. I'm not a fan of that. Also, um, Moray is a major issue um, in here. We can see a lot of the teal color Moray on the backhand blur. Are you on about that. the um, the chromatic aberration that there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which I was going to ask yeah. a question whether that was fake or not because when I look at it, I'm like, um, it's a lot. No, it's not. It's a and lot in matter, there. It's a lot, and you can see if you look at like the drip in the front, you'll have the magenta moray or um, mm. chromatic aberration magenta on the le on the left side, and then on the further back, you can see you have that teal. Yeah. So you're you're basically getting like you're getting a a ton. So most likely, this does not have an AA uh, any kind of um, filter in it um, because the this, the Marais it's an Icon D five hundred on a fifty millimeter f one point eight. I would That's, just, I would just say it's a poor lens quality, maybe. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this yeah, D five hundred is a fantastic camera. Mm. We're looking most likely at a maybe. This is there's, the. There's a lot of blooming on it as well. There's a lot of blooming. Do you know what I mean? Yes, it's there's like, bloom. Yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot that. This is not the fault of the photographer. This is a technical fault of the actual lens. Um, like I said, it's either lens or camera or both, but you're talking about a lot. Now, you could right now in your Lightroom software or whatever you're using for your editor, you can remove this, um, this moray uh, or this, uh, uh, excuse me, the, uh, this fringe, as we call it, this fringing where you have the, the purple on one side, the green on the other side. But the problem is, is most of these pieces of software that do it, they'll say, do you want to compensate for this or do you want to compensate for that? It's sometimes not both so you'd have to do it kind of twice or do it or get in there and actually do it yourself 
Um, but it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. And like I said, I'm, I'm looking through the JPEG. I can't look at the original, so I can't tell, you know, how bad it is. But by the JPEG, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, Lightroom is having trouble just removing that stuff. <laughs> it really I was going to say, that's why when you have that, when you have both, like, like I said, you have both spectrums, right? Yeah. You have magenta on one side and you have that teal on the other. It's going to be very difficult to be able to remove that. Very, very difficult. So what, um, you, I mean, obviously. I would personally do it. I would do it separate. I would mask is what yeah. I would do it. I would do it with masks. So would you guess that if this is a lens issue? You know, it could be the lens. What I would probably do is I would take another lens um, and shoot something that's high contrast because that's where you're going to end up getting um, this type of uh, um, anomaly, let's call it, this fringing, um, and see if it's doing it. So it could be a problem with an AA filter. It could be a problem with, you know, in other words, a problem with the camera or it could be a problem with the lens. Also, you know, there's 50 millimeter lenses, like for example, on Canon, you can get a 50 millimeter 1.4 that's like a pro lens. So you get a 50 millimeter plastic um, F1.8, I believe it is, which is a non-pro lens. And that non-pro lens is going to give you a lot more of this type of uh, chromatic aberration that the you know, that fringing that the other one wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there you this go. Is what I was talking about. This one is the 50 millimeter F1.8 for Canon. It's called the Nifty 50, right? Right. Is that the plastic or is yeah, that Yes, the plastic the... Nifty 50, the plastic fantastic. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's the 1.8. Yeah. It's the 1.8. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah. Never use this lens on 1.8, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. awful. Uh, you you will get the exact same chromatic aberration you've just seen on that image if you use this on one pilot. But if you stop right. it down by just one stop, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just gone. Yeah. So uh, I have a shot on my Instagram where I'm promoting a, an Ivex lens, and I've got my hand down by the side, and I'll be honest with you, it took me forever to to, to get the shot. And I was like, I was doing it remotely because I had my one camera set up and I was hitting it remotely because I was on my own. And uh, I was like, yes, got the shot. Then when I zoomed in, I had all this chromatic aberration. I'm like, what? So then I was like, yeah, I made a mistake. I'm, I'm shooting wide open. So stop it down one, repeat it again. And the image was so much better being stopped down. So, yeah. But again, yeah, this this is something you would notice if you go back to our previous conversation about uh, our f-stops, running through the f-stop mm -hmm. range. This is something you will notice. You'll notice, um, you know, you'll notice diffraction. You'll notice if you've got chromatic aberration, where it's worse, where it's least. Right. And then if you learn that, okay, when you go on to, uh, a, let's say you get hired for a paid shoot, you know exactly what f-stop to use. Whereas if you go into a paid shoot and you uh, produce an image and it's got an issue with it, you're having to go fix in there and fix it then. You know, you're talking mm -hmm. hours of Photoshop work to fix it. So, yeah, yeah again, get to know your lenses. And again... If it is the lens, and maybe the lens is just useless at doing what you're doing, then replace the lens. Yeah, Could you recommend yeah. a 50 mil for the Nikon? You know, I so for this type Sigma? of work, <laughs> no, you know, I mean, for for this type of work, I would probably use um, like this shot right here would have been really nice with like a 100, like a macro, uh, either, you know, even like a Canon, uh, well, on an icon, you could use a macro of any kind of proper. But for me, I, I like a macro. Whenever you're t shooting this tight, you end up with a better image for the most part than just shooting this standard lens. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's say, uh, let's say eight out of 10 times, right? So I would just do that. I would, and with this image too, um, I, just by looking at it, I don't think this is focus stacked at all. Um, I think this is just a shot really, you know, high. I'd say it's uh, a it's single probably... shot. I mean, I'm very concerned about yeah. the blooming on it now. I don't understand why. Yeah, it's I, just I still not... think that's because the stock's wide open. Yeah, it's... It must be wide yeah, open. It's, it's a problem. But anyways, like I said, as far as that running stuff yeah. and food photography, you know, try using like Elmer's glue, add color to it if you need to, change the color. Um, there's a lot of different um, substances that you can use, like glycerins, if you need to kind of give a little bit of a, a bright highlight to something to look wet. There's a lot of things yeah. you can do with food work um, that uh, that but, we've uh, done in the past. So, yeah, well, but that's like well, a whole, well no that's a whole other uh, video. A nice creative shot though so well done yeah let's move on to the next one. Oh my god is it is that this another weird looking thing <laughs> it's a that's a that is a revel that's a definitely a revel is it 
Look at that. That is the coolest. Look at those eyes. Well, he got the, the yeah. he or she got the eyes on. dead on. I mean, the eyes are in focus. We're good. Yeah. This is now, on is... the, this is on a lower two times uh, macro lens. So is this stacked or is it not? Because I'm seeing this left leg. You see how this is out of focus back here? But yeah, the this, nose... is a, this is a single shot, I'd say. Okay, and this nose is in focus here, so this yeah. must be pretty much straight you know, up and down. This, this this leg is pointing towards the camera, and the nose is just up and down, basically. Yeah. Well, this is on a Canon EOS M50 with the uh, 65 millimeter lower lens. Wow. Which is which one's that one there? That's an interesting combination, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bear with me, I've got all the lower lenses here. Yes. So yeah, so I have the um, the lower lens here. Uh, that is this lens, right here. Stick it in front of my face so it focuses. There you go. Yes, there you go. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a nice lens. It's very small as well. I must say, very small. Yeah. So me looking at this with the JPEG, I love that all the pollen, all those little um, there, everything is left in. It's very like organic how it would mm. be. I, I like it. The only one that I would remove is the only one that's not yellow, and that would be on its let's call its nose. I don't know what it is. Um, that's white. Yeah. I would probably remove that one um, just because it's kind of it feels odd compared to the rest. Um, it's uh, like a piece of dirt or sand in comparison to pollen. Um, or whatnot, there but there we go. Job done. <laughs> there you go. Done. Yeah. Um, I mean, but overall, I, I like this. I like the color a lot. Um, I just think that it looks. I think it looks really nice. Yeah. I, you know, so for me, I, I would like to see more of the subject. Um, so I would zoom in a little bit, and I would lose possibly some of this darkness um, right here at the bottom. Bottom. Um, where you have the, you know, that separation, I'd probably lose some of this, even though it does add a little bit, just to be able to bring the subject matter in a little bit tighter. Because if you're going to use that much of the frame for empty space, um, well, you know, what what is the story? The story is about this, this bug, I would bring it in closer. Um, it, its eyes are awesome. So I would really want to yeah, get in there and lose a little bit of the background yeah, the, uh, just because the photographer so... is in the chat by the way nice yeah so he says it's not stacked um the one thing i would remove i'd be tempted to remove is this part up here because the petal is in focus and i keep getting pulled up towards it so i would be very tempted just to get yeah. rid of that part there yeah, yeah just like that i agree there you go so and that's just a simple that's just a simple crop you're not yeah. you're not you know reinventing the wheel you're just cropping in a little bit and, yeah um yeah. taking off that little that little that little white spot that you took off and, i mean that's really it, about it. it's focus like is uh, nailed on the exposure is nailed on but i'll tell you what focusing these dandelions i'm assuming it's a dandelion okay it, it can be hard because those dandelions will throw off your exposure mm -hmm. you know and uh so photographing a subject on a dandelion, it can be um, it can be a bit tricky, but he's nailed it. So yeah, just those few little edits that we would do. I haven't checked for dust bunnies. Let me just check. You get points knocked off for dust bunnies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> dust bunnies, no dust bunnies. That's great. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like All right it. then. So we uh, uh, get we on to the last one. This one actually looks like your shot. It's something that you would shoot. Uh, did you stick one in yourself? Or? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I can tell you now, um, I'm not... Look, it's a great image, but I wouldn't have stuck this in as it is because I like to see the spiders eyes. That's my only complaint about this. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking from an aesthetic um, point of view, okay? When you see jumping spiders, again... It's my, it's my, uh, it's my preference. I prefer to try not to show the fangs as much as possible. Um, when you see the fangs, people start getting scared of them and they cringe. But this is a typical action of a jumping spider when he's cleaning his eyes. They'll come up like wind wipers and start wiping up and down. Okay, uh, I like to catch it as this um, this front pepper pot. I think I think a book called pepper pot. But when that goes in front of the fang and you've got the eye. In shot sometimes i'll have the fangs if it's an interesting pose um 
but I do prefer to see the actual spider's eyes. But let me take a look at Fo yeah, focusing so, is bang on. Focusing is bang yeah, on. the focus looks great. No, so for me, um, you know, I like the shot a lot. Um, I would probably lose a little bit this on the the bottom where there's a little bit yeah. in focus at the tip at the very bottom. I'd probably lose that. Um, for me, also, I feel like the image is a, a an image that has this really great warmth to it, and the greens and the olive color to it. And I feel like the blue in the flash is distracting. I would probably take some of those highlights that feel very blue and knock those down to that green or that olive or that yellow or something else that would kind of warm it up a little bit. Is I feel like it competes a little just on the fangs and on that on that left leg, let's say. And some of the hair feels a little bluish. Um, yeah. um, in comparison to warm, I would probably start out by changing the um, um, just color correcting, just going a little bit warmer on it. So let's say if this was you know uh, fifty two hundred, I would knock it down to forty seven. Let's say uh, I'm not sure what it is. Obviously, I'm looking at a JPEG, but I would start with that and then kind of add to that just slightly. Well, the uh, the photographer is in the chat. He said he tried to catch his shyness. Mm -hmm. Which, um, yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, you nail the focus. I can't see any dust bunnies, which is good. We like no dust bunnies. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a good image. Just like I said, it's just my personal preference. I do prefer to see the eyes over uh, anything else. But again, this might be a collection of images where he's got one mm -hmm. with the eyes, and this is just the one that he's um, sent in. Right, um, right, but yeah, right. um, yeah, so was this, this stacked this, this, or this, not stacked? It I'd, looks I'd like it, would be, it has to be stacked considering how no, much. No, I'd, I'd say it's not. No? You think it's one shot? Yeah, it's Canon 70D on a 105mm. When you're on a crop sensor, you actually gain more uh, depth of field. You're right, right, right. So I'd say it's a single. I'd say it's single. Yeah, Roberto said that uh, he tried removing the blues, but he couldn't. Um, well, I've so, just showed so you how to do it, okay? <laughs> Just yeah. Review the uh, the the recording. You'll see how I easily removed the uh, the blues out of the image. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when it's and when with the blues removed, like what um, Stuart just did there, I think it just it just feels a lot better. And um, you always want to. So this doesn't matter if you're you're capturing um, bugs, you're capturing people. You really want to match your flash or your lighting to this subject or to the background or to whatever that's why we used to gel stuff with cto gels we, we would gel things now we're shooting raw we can make corrections later on obviously it's still always good to get it right in camera like i always say but i also do episodic tv programs i'm a dp uh, director of photography and lighting is very important and when you're shooting video you want to get it right once again in camera you don't have to color grade after the fact because that costs money so getting it right. So we'll CT, we'll we'll gel stuff to get the colors just right and whatnot. And you could do the exact same thing with this. You can warm up your flash with a gel, and now all of a sudden you wouldn't even have to we are worry about it in post production. So it's just something you can do beforehand. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it, it's a it's a nice shot. It's yeah, a nice absolutely shot. love it. Good stuff. Well, that is the uh, that's the last one for uh, the Excellent. session. Well, this was good. Uh, this was good. It was enjoy. I hope everyone enjoyed our commentary. Yeah, so, on if you've it got anyway. any questions, guys, let us know in the comments. Okay. Yeah. Because we log Absolutely. off once the questions stop coming in on this channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. All right. I'm just going to see if anyone's put anything in after the uh, the yeah, deadline. I'm gonna, that's, um, yeah, I'm going to take a look also to see if there's any. Uh, just in case there's an absolute killer image in there that we might want to look at. Uh, we got right. we got five in there, but I might leave them till the next show. To be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just take it for the for the next one. That's fine. Yeah. So and, um, um, again, guys, there is always a cut off because I have to get these images over to Joe before we go live. Um, right. So that's why there's a cut off there. If you did miss the cut off, then I would suggest you make sure you subscribed and click the bell icon so you get notified when a new live goes up. And right. uh, follow me on social media because I do tweet out, I do put it on uh, Facebook and that to say that there is a live coming up and to submit your images. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And if you guys want to follow me and check check out my stuff, you can always go to the YouTube channel. Uh, just check out uh, J. Christina. So you go youtube.com forward slash J. Christina. Do, and that's do, Christina with no H. <laughs> do check him out, but don't subscribe because we're in a race, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't subscribe to me. Don't do that. Just come <laughs> check out. we got like 550 videos of nonsense over there to, to go and watch. So there's a, there's Hold a, there's on. A no, 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 there's about... There's five of them that are, are, are pretty good because they got me in it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're on those. Yeah, <laughs> we we're doing. So we've been doing like every week or we're, a couple of weeks we missed, but we've been doing like a weekend review, and we'll talk about things that you know were spoken about during the week, and then kind of go over them a little bit. Uh, the the most recent one I think was um, what was it? This this week was there was some interesting stuff this week, but you know we. La uh, we're not going to do one tomorrow, so you're not going to nope. you're not going to find a weekend review. So um, yesterday I talked about Canon possibly stealing some tech from Pentax, um, and that was kind of an interesting conversation that we had back and forth. And also Sony uh, discontinued um, you know some lenses, some bodies, DSLRs are basically gone from Sony. So there was a there was some things that uh, were going on some Canon stuff. So if you want to look at any of those videos, once again, head over to my, my channel and go check those out. But yeah, we're definitely sure. not going to be doing because you're going on holiday. Yeah, I'm taking, a, done I'm here, taking so. a, a free day break from YouTube, photography and everything. I'm not even taking the camera with me. I will take my moment lenses, wherever I've put them. So put that over there. So yeah, I've got my little, my little pack of moment lenses there. So, I don't know if you've ever tried these, Joe. They literally clip on lenses for your um, mm. your phone. So that's the most I'm taking with me. Is that? And let's let's take. Yeah. Shall we take a bit now? All right? Because I'm going to the same place I went last time, and I didn't see anything to photograph. Right. What's the bet in there that I'm only taking the moment lens that I find a jumpy spider on the beach or something or on the wall? Yeah. I guarantee it. Or just something, yeah, something of interest. That's that's normally how it goes. But, you know, I generally, whenever we go on vacations or whatnot, I will I will shoot with my iPhone or I'll bring, like, a small pocketable camera. Um, like I used to do, like, an S120, I think it was, a Canon, like, a little uh, point and shoot. Um, I can easily I can easily bring this what I'm uh, recording on or shooting with right now, which is a Sony ZV-1. It's really small, but as long as it's small and it has a built-in lens, I don't want to sit there and change lenses and all of this nonsense. I want to just push a button, the lens goes away, and I can stick it in my pocket or stick it in yeah. a bag or something. Call it a day. Um, I do like to have something better than a phone with me at all times, just in case, you know, because. You know, the phones look great, but I just feel like the phones are the same thing as the old 110, where, you know, everyone, everything was like 35 millimeter forever, medium format um, film. And then all of a sudden the 110 came out. And then all of a sudden you went from a sensor that was this big to a sensor, like literally the size of your pinky nail. And all the photographs for about a decade, a decade and a half were just trash. So... Um, I feel like that's a lot what's happening right now. A lot of people are taking memories with their iPhone or with their Samsung phone. And then later on in 10 years, they're going to go back and they're going to be like, God, this looks like crap. What the heck was I doing? I, you know, and this, I'll, I'll I, do that. I'll do that with images I took last year. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there is something to be said about having a proper camera, yeah. you know, so, even if it's small. But a lot of manufacturers, as you know, are list they're not no longer making the point and shoots they're not they're not making the consumer type grade stuff yeah they're getting away from it they're doing away and i mean nikon got rid of basically everything um you know that's quote unquote the the cheaper stuff canon's still doing their m series and some others but you know i think canon's going to kill off the m series they you know they might i'm, they, I'm they hoping really i'm might. hoping they still do the camera but with an rf mount that's yeah. what I'm hoping. I really am hoping. And I'm, I'm hoping that they also create a um, R7, mm -hmm. which will be a 7D replacement, um, which if is they that do APS an R7, C, I will have that. That's for you. I will have Yeah, it. because now you have that, that extra is, reach. Yeah. It's crop and have a RF mount on that. Now all of a sudden you can use all the lenses that you currently have on a crop mm -hmm. body 
that will be mirrorless, so, which will I mean, be that R7. Talking that from be big. Uh, a macro photographer's point of view, right? The reason why we go for the higher end cameras is not for the full frame. It's for right. the cleaner image, the better low mm -hmm. light performance and stuff like that. So if you're stacking, you're stacking less noise, yeah? Right. But now, the difference between an APS-C uh, camera and the full frame camera when it comes to uh, digital noise and grain is very, very marginal now, mm -hmm. okay? And if they put out an R7 that's got a 1.6 times crop, or even, even if they're doing micro four thirds, yeah? If, if I can shoot at ISO 400 and have the same amount or less grain than I have in my ESR, I'm swapping straight away, yeah. you know, because it's all yeah. about the grain. Because, again, like I said, when you stack, you're building up that grain. It can interfere with right. the stack, you know, and I hate grain in my uh, image. I really do. Yeah. But I, I, um, this this also holds true with astrophotography. Yes. It's the exact same thing with astrophotography because you're stacking tons and tons of photos, one on top of another, and you're building up, building up, building up. Um, noise. So um, yeah, I, I just um, I, I want to see it, and they just they just have to make sure that they put that um, RF mount onto that R7, and you would end up with an amazing, amazing camera that a lot of people like yourself, a lot of astrophotographers, a lot of people will buy, um, and I think that it would do really, really well if they tried making a digital, you know, version. Um, where you have like a whole nother separate set of glass, it would be stupid. But the thing is too, guys, the best portion of any piece of glass is towards the center. Yeah. As you get closer and closer to the outer periphery, you end up with less and less, um, let's say, uh, clarity. There's actually a lot of things that become less, but let's just call it clarity. So you want, by using an APS-C, um, the smaller sensor, you're actually taking the best portion of that lens and using that. So it could be something amazing. It really could. Mm. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. I, We're speculating I, here, right? We're yeah, speculating. Exactly. We, don't, we don't know exactly. But, uh, what, I, what I need that. to do a couple of plugs. Uh, um, if you enjoyed this stream, okay, and you like the channel, do me a favor, right? go onto social media, tagging Canon in a post, telling them that you, they need to send me the RF lens for testing because I've emailed them and they've ignored me. They've literally just ignored me. I'm like, I'm not buying this thing for testing. You know, I can't afford to buy it. But I would like to test out the RF lens. It, it could be because, right. you know, half the time I'm slagging Canon off anyway. But hey, I digress. Yeah. But yeah, I want to put the RF lens against the lower lens. Right. I don't think it's going to win. Right. But I would like to test it. And uh, again, I have emailed them. I've sent a message on Twitter. They're just not they, interested. And I think they're not interested, right? Because they know that lens is not going to beat the lower. That's I honestly I, think, I honestly that's that's why I think they're not going to send me so, one. So okay, I agree with you. And I think that the, the story here goes to is use case. Hmm. And you're doing macro photography, you are never, let's just say, you know, 99% of the time, you're never using autofocus. Whereas these lenses are you know, that Lao lens is specifically built for what it is. And um, whereas the Canon has to try to marry both worlds. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's very difficult to do that. And that's why a lot of people will buy, and even us on set, um, we'll shoot like a Panasonic, um, like an Eva One or something with a Canon mount to it or with whatever mount that we're going to use, but then we'll use Zeiss glass or, or something because we don't need autofocus at that point. Number one, the Panasonic can autofocus because it's crap. But besides that, we are going to, what, but, you know, but besides that, we need a really tack sharp lens. Yeah. So we'll use Zeiss or we'll mm -hmm. use something else. We'll even use a Canon um, lens on it. Um, so, you know, it's once again, it goes back to use case and yeah. what the lens is designed for and what, you know, what you're going to do with it. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But we'll yeah, see. I don't think that it's going we'll to do as well. If, if, it I, have, what if it I have to wait till it's released and then rent it, then I, I will. Uh, it will be yeah. on the channel at some point. So I'm going to have to, I, I suspect I'll have to rent it from somewhere to to review it. Yeah. But anyway, let's, moving on, uh, I need to plug my buddy's uh, book. So Don Kamareska has finally got his book out, in case anyone who doesn't know. If you're a macro photographer, everyone knows. So. <laughs> but I don't know if you saw my video of the unboxing of the uh, the book. I don't know if you saw that, this book right here. Okay. Nice. If you want to learn macro photography, this is the book to get, okay? Right here. 
okay so i have a video on my channel of the unboxing i'm not going to go into detail about this book but um there is an image i want to show that let me just find this image i want to show because i'm pretty sure joe hasn't seen this yet but uh, there is an unboxing of um this book let me show this let me show you this joe let me you look at that wow yeah so, <laughs> excuse yeah. me you know what so take so take a look i mean that that right there yeah. that says a lot too if you look at the if you look at that image we were talking about the other image when you were asking mm -hmm. was it done look at the um so look at yeah. each one of those tiny tiny pieces or tiny tiny um drops of water and you can see how the flower is in a different uh perspective for each one of them there's not one that's identical yeah um, yeah. And that's normally what we would see. And that's why we were questioning on that one image if it was mm. a composite or was it not. Exactly. Because well, that's you, normally um, what you would see. I've got an unboxing of this on my channel, okay? And this very copy here is getting given away to one lucky viewer of uh, the channel. So right. if, if you want to have that book, I'm also going to sign it myself on the inside cover as well. So it's an extra special uh, book. Uh, but if you yeah. want that one, then go and check out that video. It's the uh, I released it yesterday, and uh, just watch the video. The instructions are in there on how to get yourself that book. But um, yeah, this book. I mean, look how thick it is. It's all about yeah. macro photography. I'm, I'm I'm actually calling it the holy grail of macro photography books now because it's got everything yeah. in that you need to know. And uh, don't awesome. don't come and rescue me. I mean, I'm I'm privileged to be able to call him my friend now. And uh, I learned most of my stuff off, off him. So, yeah, great, great book to have. So go and check that out, guys, if you're interested. Yeah, it's always, it's always good to have uh, mentors, people that can actually give you information that, yeah, you can go ahead and gleam yourself from doing a ton of research and, you know, years sometimes mm. of research. But having someone that has done this stuff in the past and they're able to or willing to you know, share with you, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely awesome. And by you giving them credit is fantastic because a lot of people, they will not give the people that mentor them indirectly or directly the credit after the fact. Um, and so doing it's, it, it, it shows character. So, yeah. you know, that I'm sure well, you appreciate I, all, that. I always give credit where credit's due. And uh, the good yeah. thing is because this stream has gone perfectly. The, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the computer is practically asleep at the moment, even though we're yeah, streaming yeah. in a high bit rate. But it does mean that now I can actually plan ahead and get Don Komoretska on the channel. And um, people keep asking me, when, when, when are you going to announce the winner? We're, we're looking at a couple of weeks to announce the winner. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it live on YouTube. And Don is going to be joining me for the drawing of the winner of that book. So look forward to that, okay? Cool. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. There we go. So, um, yeah, if there's any friends and family, such as Lee Hall, for instance, if he wants the book, he can enter uh, in the contest because we're drawing it live. There's no way you can cheat. Do you know what I mean? Um, so go right. ahead. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. There you go. So I think uh, if we don't have any questions, we shall leave it there. Yeah, I think so. Have a quick look. It's mostly just discussion. It was about good. The, uh, it was it was good. I just uh, I, you know I think it uh, turned out really good. It was nice to be able to kind of hang out with everyone, and yeah. I'm glad that a lot of people that or a majority of the people that contributed were in the chat, so we can talk with them. I think it was great that you were able to do the modifications live on the fly, and so that people can actually see um, what can be done a little bit different. That doesn't mean that they have to do it. You know, we're yeah. not. We're not right. There is no such thing right or wrong when it comes to art, but it's just another perspective, and it's always good to be able to get other people's that uh, other people's perspectives that are in the same field, let's say, as you are. So yeah, um, I so think anyway, that's great. If, if guys, if you enjoyed this uh, this session, then give it a thumbs up, give it a share, comment on it to say that you enjoyed it, and we'll do more and more. The more interaction we get, the more likely it is that we are going to do more of them. And uh, do Absolutely. also go check out uh, Joe's channel. He's uh, he's about two hundred subscribers behind me at the moment. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he could do a little a little bit of a boost, not too much because you don't want to take the lead. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Maybe up to. Let me just check. Actually, how how many uh, subscribers you need to go up to? Uh, yeah, two hundred will do it. Okay. <laughs> 
200. That's it. All right. Yeah, that's 200. 200 it do it. But yeah, if you go over to Jay Christina, he's got a load of videos on the whole technical side of, of, of stuff, um, news yeah, we... and stuff like that. And uh, mostly bitching about um, Panasonic's crappy Panasonic, auto focus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do the you know we do the news, uh, we do a lot of the news um, reviews and uh, commentary. Yeah. So I do a lot of the commentary on what's going on. And um, you know what you know, would be good? You know what would be good if we could both get hold of the RF le- uh, macro lens and do a live about it. You know what I mean? I think it would be cool. It'd Absolutely, be good. it would be good. Yeah, but like yeah, I yeah. said, I am putting the feelers out to try and get it. I'm just I'm hitting roadblock after roadblock. Canon aren't interested in sending me one. Um, yeah, but that that you know sometimes <laughs> it has to do with the number of um, followers too. Some you know some of these companies they'll look at you know a they, follower they, with they would rather 5, send the, the lens to a Canon ambassador that doesn't know yeah. how to do macro. Yeah, and even if they only have um, you know five thousand followers, that doesn't really matter because it's they know that they're going to get a decent uh, review on it. Yeah, you know. I don't. I don't do is, that. Okay, I mean, so, honestly, to God, I don't. If there's an issue with it, I'll point it out. But I can't yeah. say there be an issue because let me just grab this. Okay, all they got to do. So while you're doing that, let me let me just say one thing. While you're doing that, I the I think that today more and more photographers or even viewers today are um, more, let's say, acute to seeing like that that ambassador just upping or just promoting something there's a lot of these channels that are just like here's my affiliate links i love this here's my affiliate link i love this and i think people are starting to see through it they are and you know and having a channel that is unbiased um, and that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on over yeah. at the J. Christina site. It's 100% I'm biased. I shoot Canon, but I will bitch about Canon all day long if they're breaking something or if they're whatever they're doing. And I think that's really important so that you have this because today is very difficult to find channels that are not, you know, let's say that are unbiased and they'll and they'll just say it how it is because it's all about the money and, uh, and and that's really about it. And you see that I'm sure a lot when you're wandering around looking at any of the, the photography and it's not just about photography, it's everything lately. Ambassadors are the ones that are selling product. Um, there's no more, you know, advertising money that's being put into magazines. Um, right. A lot of that money now is being put into ambassadors pockets and people to review that are going to be gave, giving positive reviews. You so, got to remember as well is um, if someone is an ambassador, they can't actually badmouth the equipment. It's in their contract. No, yeah. It's and they're not contract. allowed to use other equipment as well, which is why you'll never see me be an ambassador uh, because yeah, right. imagine if Canon were to email me and go, we want you on our ambassador program, but you can't use any of the lower lenses. Right. I know, I know what the reply would be to that. <laughs> yeah, that would be a, that'd be a difficult... And I'll be honest with you, right? I am not a Lauer fanboy either because I, I hit on them hard on a weekly basis. I'm always emailing saying, have you ever sealed it yet? Have you got rid of that crappy front element yet? <laughs> I'm right. always doing it, you know? So I'm yeah. not a fanboy, but at the end of the day, I will use whatever is best works. for the job I need to do. And at the moment, it's that. Now, talking about the RF macro lens, right? This one's the EF 100mm. I'm sure Joe has seen a few of these in his time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the good old uh, EF. Fantastic lens. It's a brilliant yep. lens. That's, I actually that's, sold yeah, mine. That's, <laughs> did you? I sold mine, and I use a 90 uh, Tamarin, which I know you don't like the Tamarin, but my 90 Tamarin was actually sharper than the 100 um, uh, L glass uh, um, Canon. <laughs> anyway so this is the lens that canon have to beat okay they're not looking at tamron or um Lauer. they're looking at this is the lens they have to beat and what i want to know is is the rf lens three times better than this lens because that's how much it costs three times more <laughs> right. than this lens yeah so yeah. it's got to be three times better. but i will be looking at trying to get one older one of them and you know I'll just put it out there. You never know. There might be a lens rental company that watches this video. You know, get in yeah. touch. We can work together. You send me a lens for a review and we'll post your links all over the place, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to grabbing that lens. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, so, so I, I guess yeah, that's it. That's going to be it, I think. Yeah. So I want to thank everybody for turning out. Um, we haven't done one of these for quite some time because, again, the computer was a bit bit slow but now we've got the the old uh, sweet potato running we'll be able to do these 
more often. I'm, I might do it to start with. I might do one every two weeks just to get into the flow of it. And sure. then I might ramp it up to every Monday or so like that. So, and uh, I also, I'm also working on a new, a new idea for having guests on board like we have with Joe, but it's going to be a completely different separate series. So keep an eye out mm -hmm. for that when that starts. So Joe, tell them where they can find you again. Yeah, you can find me over at, uh, well, if you go over to my website, jchristina.com, you can find all the products that I've invented over the many years. There's a lot of stuff over there. You can check that out. Also, you can find me on Facebook and on uh, Instagram and on mm -hmm. YouTube and just about I'm, I'm, everywhere. I'm, while I'm here so, as well, you really need to get yourself a, uh, a logo. Because a logo. You, you, I need you, a logo. Yeah, you've still got the uh, the WordPress logo at the top of the. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, that would that <laughs> that actually when I tra when I transferred there, 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 look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know when I transferred over, I actually have one. When I transferred yeah. over from one server to the next, that for some reason didn't transfer. And I have to change it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, get on, get on it. Get on it. Get it fixed. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you can go over to jcristina.com. You'll find all the different products that I've invented from lens cleaning to autofocus lens calibration to color correction cards that I made from all kinds of things. So check that stuff out. And on a, on but, a side uh, note, I have all of those here for review. So keep an eye out. I'll be uh, putting those through their paces. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully absolutely. they're okay. Because, uh, yeah, hopefully. If it's I've got, garbage, a, I've got a direct line it. to the guy who makes them. So. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, call it call it as it is for sure. But all, all of my products you can find over on B&H Photo and Video on yeah. Amazon.com through Prime. You can uh, find however, website, the, the um, place, so. this photo reference tool just here, okay? Mm -hmm. Joe doesn't know this yet. Um, but basically, I've been using that to color grade my videos since I built the new computer. Oh, works perfectly. I didn't even know that. Yeah, works perfectly. It's brilliant. So uh, that That's is pretty cool. In fact, I've got it right yeah. here. Um, th that thing didn't survive to have a an unboxing because I'll it straight out. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'll have to put it back in to do the video. So, on it. so, but so I let am, me ask this, you. This, since, I mean, since, it's, since you just popped this on me right now, let me ask you: <laughs> Are you using the gray card portion? to neutralize or you're using the dual color um the dual access color at the control moment, on I'm, the other side i'm using this part at the moment okay yeah, yeah, yeah. simple so just, click because yeah. to be fair it, it's not that hard to color grade the studio because it's yeah you know, it's the same right. shot every time but i'm, I'm going to be interested in getting it outside when i do some outdoor mm -hmm. videos which i'm hoping to get out next week um, yeah, and make sure you shoot both sides of the card, and yes. um, then you can use that backside to do some uh, color uh, corrections after the fact for some yeah. creative color. So yeah, yeah and I do, he, I he also sells that. teas as well, guys. If you're interested, <laughs> <laughs> I know I, Dark Moon teas, Dark Moon teas. I've been, so my channel always starts out with um, you know tea, and I'm always drinking tea, and I have tea time. And some of the people said, you know, what kind of tea do you drink? And I'm like, I infuse my own tea. I've been doing it for a decade. Um, I stopped, uh, I think I was, I stopped drinking coffee about five years ago. So I only use, you know, some type of tea. So I made a whole brand. It's a uh, dark moon teas. I've been selling for about mm -hmm. six months just because everyone wanted them. So <laughs> they're out there and, uh, go pick them up. Matter of fact, today I got to the bottom of some called uh, fireside and that's got that smokiness of like lapsung tea. It's so good. So yeah, good. I, um, a, I, blends, I absolutely, all organic I absolutely yeah, look love, at that. love tea. It's, you know, it's, mm. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in sunny South Florida here in the U S and you're in the UK and you're drinking Coke and I'm drinking tea. Oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be completely that. honest with you now. I have an addiction to the Coke. I can't seem to get off it. That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens. Technically, I should sue him for destroying my teeth, but hey, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I did get, I'll be yeah. honest, I did get off it until the pandemic hit. Um, really? And then it was just boom, like that. But I am buying, <laughs> I'm buying 24 cans every four days, maybe. That's a lot. It's a, it's a lot, isn't it? It's not good for you. It really isn't. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That and some Red Bull, and you're just done. You just cut your life in half. I don't... <laughs> there it is. This yeah, is this I'm is like, for medicinal purposes, though. Know, the Red Bull will go once this tough comes out. Monday, I should be having that out. And uh, yeah, I I you, you'll know because I'll, I'll, I'll send you a picture of the tough ones. It's out to make sure it's gone. Boom, gone out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to leave it there. Let me just mention uh, that Joe does have a Discord channel as well, and the link is on uh, his website. It's the yeah, yeah. community it's portal, community. is it? Yeah, so it's just community.jcristina.com. Okay. Now... When you click on the join, it'll come up with like a sales page. 
you don't have to pay to join, okay? That's just member Absolutely. perks, okay? So don't... Because when... I'll be honest with you, when I first clicked on this, this is before I spoke to you, I was like, I have to pay? Get lost. And right, I, right. I, I was gone, you know? And it wasn't till several weeks later when I, I checked that you don't have to Right, pay, right, know? right, right. Um, yeah. That's just... I made it like that so that if... one Because I've had people say, can I contribute to the channel? What yes. can I do? You know? And this was before um, we were able to have people... Like, memberships on our yeah. site because they but only even gave even the memberships, memberships, though. Even the memberships, Google takes half of it off you anyway. They take everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. So Google so takes at least, everything. So it's a good so way of funding... They, yeah, if they contribute in any other way that doesn't have to do with uh, yeah. Google or YouTube, then you know we get basically all of it. So um, that's definitely it makes it helpful. But yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because mm. maybe I need to put like a little, you know, a little verbiage I, in there that says this is free. Yeah, you I don't would. Have I to would pay. make. Let me just go back there. Actually, I would make. Yeah, it, I think it's a good idea. If, if anyone's I like, like me, and I'm in a hurry. Oh, I'll enjoy that. I'll click on here. I'm not going to show it, obviously. Right. And you could do with making the free, maybe we'd make it red. So it's like, oh, okay, that's the one I want. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I like that. To just just emphasize, because some people like me, I'll, I'll admit, I don't read stuff that often. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, oh. Yeah. But uh, it's, it is a buzz, buzzling community in there, and you've got lot, lots of different um, channels you can go in there and uh, and discuss things. So it is, it is good. Absolutely. And you'll find absolutely. me in there from time to time. I'm not that active because I've got my own community I have to keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And it's a full time job, isn't it? Keeping an eye on them. There's, you know? there's always something going on. I mean, we have Instagram, right? You yeah. have your Facebook. I have LinkedIn. I have the YouTube channel that's constantly making contact for that. You have Twitter. I have like 22,000 people that follow me over there. I got, you know, this, I don't know, this just constant stuff and you're, you're making stuff. And what happens is there's something new that comes out and now there's something shiny, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, now we got to go and try that and see if that works. Um, you just, you just never know what works. And, uh, it's, it's definitely, like I said before, when we first started this, it's, it's a lot about marketing. Um, because if you're not a good marketer or a good salesman of yourself, people are just not going to find you and they're not going to come and visit. And it doesn't matter how good you are because they'll never know. Yeah. You're basically That's, speaking to that yourself. That is something I'm seriously got to work on. Um, yeah. marketing myself, we all do. You know? We all do. But we'll, we'll leave it there. We're going to end the stream now, guys. So, uh, again, right. I want to thank you for turning up. I want to thank Joe for being here. And I'm pretty thank sure you. we'll have him on the uh, the channel again in the future. Uh, I'll be Absolutely. on his channel next, I think. Next Friday, yeah. you think? Yeah, 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 probably next Friday. Friday. We'll do like a weekend review type yeah. of thing like we like we do. People have been liking that. So we get to, you know, just chat about, you know, all of the news and stuff that happened for the week. Let, so let, let's let's be honest. Cool. Half an hour is chatting about the news. The next hour and a half is just me and you just bitching, moaning yeah. or bitching. Or something. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. So we'll leave yeah. it there anyway. So again, thank you and good night, guys. And we'll see you on the next stream. Thanks a lot for having me. Appreciate it.